I'm out of session. Next one to pull a strap on me, I'ma grab the weapon and bash his head in. I treat the pen like a Mac 11. Niggas trying to rap for real, well, that's as depressing as Mac in heaven. You ain't never been battle tested. I'm the best in the past or present. Don't matter when, just don't ask them questions. Shit get crazy as last election. Had them guessing what I am for five years, huh? I'm black and decker. Black and better, son. Number one, don't mistake the shit. You a raging bitch, and your girl look like Jaden Smith. Come up to me like, are you canning? While I take a piss, I'ma beat your ass real quick. Cause we can take the piss. The pills so crazy, my generation got killed, bro. Drought hit eight months back, and shit is still slow. But money waits for no man. Explains why you're still broke. Had no meals. Now they say I'm destined for a meal, so. Karma get you. I'm a boss official, took a loss, I risked it. All of this to come before the storm, you a walking victim. Palms is itching. I'm a robber rapper trying to flaunt his kid. Pick him up. Drop him on his head, I just taught him physics You just really in the way Told the pussy nigga pipe down before I gotta hit him in the face I'm just digging up his grave If you a rapper in the city and you sound like Iggy, you ain't getting played Got a dollar for a show, bitch I'm really getting paid Pipe down, I'll knock a motherfucker's lights out right now They know white shit, going five rounds Swing and connect like AD's eyebrows I'll take his head off for my crown Can it? Yo, 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 yo. Welcome to another episode of The Cypher. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Kazir, the owner and editor of Upstate Aesthetic. We're back for yet another episode of The Cypher. Every week I am joined by two great co-hosts, Sheridan Crane and Anthony Cannon, two awesome Upstate artists. It's been a bit of a busy week for me personally. Um, just been getting caught up with work, and then I actually found out some really exciting news earlier this week. Uh, came home from work, my girlfriend decided to surprise me with the fact that we're apparently having another kid. Um, so this was... Um, this is really exciting information. I haven't actually talked to many of my friends about this. Um, waited to talk about it on the Cypher. I thought that would be a cool place to talk about it. It's where most of my attention is going these days. So um, that's cool. How are you guys doing? I'm sure you didn't have news like that, but. Congrats, bro. Oh, thanks. You didn't even tell yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. I waited. I figured I would drop it on you guys right now. That was cool, you know. That's you just crazy. Live air reaction. Uh, yeah. The crowd can appreciate that. I wonder how they go. Um, how many is that now? Is that two or three? Two. Congratulations. Two. Um, Congratulations. It's exciting. My daughter's four, or she will be four by the time we have our next one. So hoping for a boy this time. Um, obviously, just just want one one of each. You know what I mean? That that would be the the easy opportunity. That would that would be what I would prefer. But um, of course, you got you got to get one of each. You feel yeah. me? And the, there's nothing better than an older sister. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, it's really exciting. It's dope. Um, that's cool. What what do you guys got going on? Aunt? Um, it's, it's been a busy week uh, myself too, bro. Um, couple, of my I know. A, it's been a a rough week for some of my family. We lost a couple people, um, people that were close to. I wasn't specifically close with, but people that I'm like that with are super tight with. Um, so my condolences to them. You know who you are. Uh, that was rough. Um, been working ten hour shifts three times a week. Um, sometimes four times a week, so it's it's been kind of it's, it's been kind of strenuous. But I've been recording a song a day, getting these tracks. Um, so it, that's been my saving grace. It's, it's been how I can call my head at the end of the day. Um, super excited that we just played Purple Heart. I hope people fuck with it. Um, it's a different vibe. I'm trying to come with something new every time. So uh, it's been a good week. How you doing, Sheridan? Well, let me start with. I really fucked with that actually. That that was actually one. I think another one of my favorites. Um, just for through a first listen uh, that you put out this year, I really like some of the bars, <laughs> and uh, I like the energy you had. Uh, this week, um, I kind of came to like a realization, or like not really a realization. I knew I was kind of just like messing around a lot since I had gotten home, been going out, drinking too much, and I was like, all right, time to chill out time to get back to work and since then uh i've been kind of like anthony recording at least a song a day and that's only three or four days now but i'm trying to keep on that uh uh on that path but uh i definitely have some stuff in the vault uh as you guys will hear later in the show um but in general kind of just just relaxing at home the last couple of days and, and getting some well i guess not really relaxing but Getting some work done, you know what I mean? Not going out, staying in. Yeah, I thought you were getting ready to say you'd come to the realization that you're a J. Cole fan. 
Um, we, we, we will get to no. the, we will get to the J Cole conversation here in a little bit. Um, we do have some other news that we've got to cover first. This first topic is one that I, I'm I'm really interested in just discussing because it's it, it's just big. Um, well, let's jump right into it. One officer from the Louisville uh, Police Department has been fired for the Brianna Taylor for the murder of Brianna Taylor. Um, it, it, it's just one police officer. This he's just lost his job. There isn't. There isn't any charges. So it, it feels like so little to me. It, it feels like almost like a gl- I'm glad we are getting we are making progress. It's been something like 90 some odd days since this has occurred. And then there hasn't been any progress. So this is the first step towards progress. But it, it, it's tough that we've got to do this a little step at a time. This is a this is the first step towards progress. Um, and if I remember correctly, Chauvin, who killed George Floyd, um, he was he was on leave without pay or fired before they charged him, um, if, if I remember correctly. Um, so this could be a step in the right direction. Um, it could just be them saving face. We'll see. Uh, time will tell. For those of you who don't know, Breonna Taylor, um, she's the lady that cops entered her crib uh, and shot her in her sleep, essentially, right? Wrong target. Um, and that's not the first case of its kind. I remember hearing two of them last year. Um, this one black man got killed in his sleep in his apartment because a white female cop walked into his crib and saw him in the bed sleeping and just killed him. Um, like, it happens far too often. So I hope Breonna Taylor gets justice. Um, but until until I see more charges, um, as opposed to just a firing, it feels like they're saving face. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think the, the best... Um thing at least so far about this is that it's very clearly a direct result of these protests it's showing that these protests can are continuing to work and are continuing to um uh get uh basically more more representation and more more uh defense against what what has been happening and i think that while the firing is not even close to enough, I think I agree with Anthony that in the in the Chauvin case, he was fired first and then charged. I'm not saying that's definitely going to happen in this case. And if it's do- if it doesn't happen to him and the other officers who were involved, I think it's an absolute crime. Um, I think that it's disgusting and should definitely result in more than one officer being fired and charged um, with. I don't. I don't know. With harsh charges, for sure. Yeah, I will. I will. Like to your point, Sheridan, the the protests and everything that has gone on. It, it's the. It's good to see that these are instituting change because the fact it took ninety days for something to happen, a lot more than ninety days for something to happen to the police involved in this shooting. Um, the fact that it's in Louisville, so it's Kentucky. You already can expect there's going to be some type of prejudice there. Um, because uh, because um, just with the the history surrounding those states, and then to see that it takes this long for something to happen to a police officer, you have to almost accredit it to that. Um, the, the the whole story to the Brianna Taylor thing, so that way we we expand on it um, and don't seem like we're just trying to point the narrative in one direction. The police the police knocked on or they didn't knock on her door. They they just entered their house. They and her husband started firing because he didn't know who was just entering his house. I believe he even asked who's there. They didn't say anything. And that's when he started firing. And then they just unloaded between, like, I want to say three police officers. There was something like 18 shots. She was sleeping in her bed. It, it's, it, it makes no sense that this is a thing. There has been, they've passed now a law that you can't just have a no-knock warrant. You have to knock to go into someone's house in Louisville. It, it's unfortunate that this is what has happened. But it's taken so long. That's what just it, it's frustrating, yeah. and I'm it, on one hand, I'm glad something is finally happening because you're right. The protests and stuff, the fact it went this long, they were trying to sweep it under the rug. They were trying to do all they can, and they're realizing they can't. And so now they're trying to yeah. do potentially the bare minimum, like you guys said. I hope that there's more to come from this, but it's just and the, well, that's why we can't stop. That's yeah. why it has to keep keep happening. Essentially, I don't I don't know the particular laws um, or the statutes around something like this. But the correlation that I see to this and how I don't understand how he's not getting charged, um, which, is, which is maybe my gray area around this law, I'm not sure what happens when a cop kills a bystander in the middle of crossfire. Because this essentially, even though 
it's not it, it shouldn't be crossfire like they shouldn't be firing back they should have never got fired at but that's what happens when you go into somebody's home unannounced in the south everybody has fucking guns you're gonna get shot at um but essentially if you're shooting at her husband who shot at you and you kill a sleeping woman what happens that that's just a bystander that's just a victim of your senseless act i don't understand how that's not at least manslaughter at like at, at the very bare minimum i don't i don't understand if they have laws um protecting them in situations like that but i would assume anybody that kills a bystander uh gets reprimanded legally um and i think that brianna taylor was actually more than just uh, a, a typical bystander it was she was in her home which is a safe space um so that's that's something that I, just doesn't sit right with me yeah, i agree it, it's just it's one of the most like frustrating things we've had to deal with too because she she was like you said she's in her home she's in her safe space she's sleeping literally like i mean it's just there's so many factors the that go most, into like, it defenseless like defenseless and like yeah. least and yet and yet it takes this long for something to happen and it, it's it's exactly why we have to continue and and the media is not there for it anymore because we're not because people are not um, destroying things. They're not burning things down. They're just doing it the right way, and so the media isn't as entertained by this. The ratings aren't there for just people protesting and trying to conduct change, but we can't stop because people aren't talking about it as much more. We, we have, that's why we have to keep talking about it, because yeah. bigger media outlets are choosing not to for whatever reason, and it, it, it's, a, it's unfortunate, because things are still going on. You yeah. just don't see it as much now. As soon as, uh, as, soon as mainstream media noticed that <clears throat> rioting wasn't happening as much as they were portraying it to be and that the destruction wasn't as abundant there was a bunch of peaceful protests happening around the nation probably didn't get the same views and ratings as as it was before so they had to focus their attention somewhere else because nobody wants to see that positivity right <laughs> yeah exactly it's sad yeah so i mean at least we're we are slowly but hopefully, surely, getting towards the justice for Breonna Taylor because she deserves it. I mean, you're gonna lose some. Any people, anyone who loses their lives deserves to have the justice come from from the action. Like it's just, it, it makes no sense, man. It just, it seriously. It, that's why it's so hard to speak about it because I can't make much sense of how we even have to talk about this 90 days after three different officers unload into someone laying in their bed. Yeah, and that many times, like it's just. It's not, it's not even, like, there's no, like, type of, like, defense. Like, they weren't even in the right place. And even if even if they were, totally not okay, no matter what. They, but they, they were in the wrong fucking they, apartment, bro. Exactly. There, there, is no, there is no defense. People should be fired, but it's a higher ups that should be fired for even executing or sending them to that location. Exactly. Um, the, the people should be charged, no ifs, ands, or buts, in my opinion. It's, abs it's absolutely a travesty. Um, and this, this Breonna Taylor situation is so crazy because she was sleeping. Um, I can't remember the dude's name that I was referring to earlier, but he, was just, he had just gotten home. He was just walking in his house, and a cop was his neighbor. She walked into the wrong apartment, and she just saw a black man. I remember that. Yeah. What she thought was her apartment killed him. Um, I think that she got charged. I think that she got charged, if I'm not mistaken. I think she got sentenced to like five years or something. Um, but that's not that's not justice to me. Yeah, um, I don't I don't want to say no. you're wrong either. But I'm there's a chance she might have even been acquitted, man. Like because I remember people being really frustrated that 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 they're definite. If it was if she did get charged, it wasn't for nearly as long as she needed to. But well, it, I, there could have been a chance that she might not have even been. That's why it's so frustrating to see because. We've seen it in the past how many times where you think that the justice is going to come and then nothing happens. Like the cops go to trial and lo and behold, they get out. Everything's fine or it's a very simple situation. So black man walk into a white woman's house to kill her and say that he thought it was her crib or his crib. You feel me? Yeah. That, that man is getting thrown under the jail, whether he's a police officer or not, whether he's a military vet or not like the. People don't realize when you flip the situation around, and it, it, it's unbelievable to think the parallels um, and how, how drastically to contrast. Yeah, so uh, hopefully over time we will see, like I said, the, ju the, the full justice for Breonna Taylor because this, this simply isn't enough. This could be the step in the right direction after a very long wait, but we'll have to continue waiting to see if something else is going to happen. Uh, 
with these situations with Breonna Taylor, with George Floyd, with many other things popping up in the news seemingly every day, um, as we came closer to June 19th, to Juneteenth, it became much more talked about than it has been in many years. Uh, if you ask the president of the United States, he is the whole sole reason of that, which is the most ridiculous thing anyone has ever heard. Um, but in light of everything that's going on, Lizzo, a very popular hip-hop artist, has gone out of her way to have a silent auction for Juneteenth, giving away a variety of different things um, and doing a raffle as well. Um, just stuff to try and promote Juneteenth, which you have to appreciate, um, especially from a mainstream artist who kind of does teeter on that line of being a pop act who caters to the white fan base. Absolutely. Absolutely. She definitely caters to a white fan base. Um, but I, I think that the black community um, is very split with Lizzo. I see people supporting her to the death, and I see people hating on her. Regardless, she's done a couple charitable things that I have seen in the past six months that have been really heartwarming, despite whatever you may think of Lizzo. Um, she's definitely given back in one of the best ways you can and as somebody in her position. Um, so she has my respect in that format. I've seen her at food drives. I've seen her at, I've seen her at Walmart just giving shit out. And granted, that could all be for PR, um, but you still did it. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, I can't speak for your intentions. You're still doing it, though. Thanks. <clears throat> Like, I, I've not always been a fan of Lizzo. I actually like her music, but sometimes her public decisions I'm not always a fan of. But in terms of, of what she does charitably, I think she's uh, leaps and bounds ahead of most other artists on her level. So I think she definitely has more of a positive impact by far than a negative impact. So I definitely support what she's doing. Especially as, a, especially as somebody uh, who's as new to success as she be. Exactly. Normally it takes for artists a couple of years to get into their charity phase or back into the community. Um, yeah. And what Lizzo represents as a big woman, a big black woman in hip hop, mm -hmm. um, regardless of what people think about her, she is breaking stereotypes and barriers that that's, a lot of people just So mm -hmm. I, think, I think what she represents is dope and it's good to see her actions uh, in the right place. Yeah, and you I can't agree. really, you can't say that her actions are a means to try and make good for the things that she's done in the past because she kind of utilizes the, the controversies that she had in the past to get people to talk about what she's doing. I mean, with this silent auction, the way she advertised it on Instagram, she posed nude while covering up enough to be able to post the image on Instagram, but that's how she got people talking about it, That's and that's a Lizzo thing. Um, when she did what whatever Diddy was doing during the coronavirus, she, she got, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on on, on social media because she was twerking on it and he didn't like that or people thought that he didn't want that but it all came down to the music she was playing but at, even at that time she was utilizing the things that people may shit on her for to get attention to something that's positive um she she while she does stuff that you might not like normally see from women her size or whatever she like you guys said she's breaking down barriers she's helping change the stereotypes that big black women might have to face and I, I'm I'm certain there's a huge community of people out there who are very thankful for her for that, regardless of their color. So it, it's mm -hmm. it's it's nice to see, especially with this being Juneteenth. Like, and and I'm sure there are other artists doing stuff, and hope you would hope so. But uh, the, it yeah, it's just nice. June, June, I agree. So that not enough people know about, and I think even the people that say they know about it don't really know about it um, as well as they think they do. I'm not about to give a history lesson right now, um, but just know it's a very historical um, and, and culturally significant thing for us um, as a people. And it's, it's a shame that it's not deep dive uh, taught in school. Um, a, lot, a lot of our, our, our history gets whitewashed. Um, and so anybody that takes the time, regardless of race or class, to learn up on it themselves independently, I appreciate. And it's really good to see something that my father, uh, my grandfather, uh, my cousins, my, my, my Southern family have been celebrating for, for years, um, not necessarily in huge, joyous celebrations, but we've, we've always dignified it as a holiday and something that holds more significance than the 4th of July, at least. Um, so it's really good to see, again, some mainstream attention and just classic fuck Donald Trump because that shit is ridiculous. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's like you say, a lot of people, even if you even if you know or you think you know about Juneteenth, like today is a day of, if, if any, to go on YouTube or whatever, whatever outlet you utilize and learn for 10 minutes. Um, educate yourself for 10 minutes. It's something I, I'm planning on doing just because, you know, I would fall into that category of someone who knows what it's supposed to represent but doesn't know enough about it to really comfortably discuss it at length. But I would like to be able to understand a lot more. So it, it's something that, as you brought that up, it came into my mind that it's something I should spend today doing. If you If you are going to go out of your way to discuss it in any way, you should take the time to educate yourself because we all know the education we got in high school or middle school or whatever didn't, didn't suffice this. So Not at all. I don't expect people to just go and read articles and articles on this shit, but I'm sure you can find a five minute video on YouTube that breaks down the history and goes a little bit deeper than maybe what they're portraying on mainstream media. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I actually really respect that, that you're, you just said that actually, I think anybody watching this, um, that tunes into the cipher should do that. Um, Especially if there's someone like, because I know so many people who are out there and, and you want, you want them to be on the front lines of trying to preach, uh, not preach, but talk about what's going on, keep people informed. But a lot of people who are sharing stuff on Facebook, they're not super educated about what's going on. And so you get someone from the other side coming at them. And, and if you're not prepared to have that discussion, you might not you might not look right or you might not even, you might go come out of it thinking maybe I'm wrong because you're not totally educated and the other person has enough information that they believe is right that they're, they're spewing off that you feel like you're not prepared for this. So I would encourage people just take some time to really educate yourself right now. Don't just, don't just surface level be someone who's trying to be an activist and actually educate yourself because I've seen it happen plenty of times from people I know that just aren't prepared for that type of political conversation. And next thing you know, there's someone on that side of their family who just starts spewing off on them and they're not ready for it. Not for real. I mean, and there's nothing more embarrassing than being that person that's not ready. I mean, I've, I've, I've put people in that position. People have put me in that position. And that's why I try not to talk too much from a place of ignorance at this point. If I don't know about something, I try to shut the hell up and listen to both sides before I form my opinion. Um, this is something that everybody needs to, at least if you if you call yourself an ally, if you if I catch you posting uh, happy Juneteenth to my brothers and sisters, then you better at least be able to explain a little bit of it. You feel me? Like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's a fact. And, and Aunt, Aunt, you mentioned getting both sides of the story. We The next topic, we definitely got both sides of the story here. Um, this, If you're unfamiliar with what's been going on with J. Cole, uh, Sheridan's new favorite artist, um, this week he dropped a new track called Snow on the Bluff, and a lot of people figured it was he was taking aim at an artist uh, named No Name. Um, she's been on social media talking a lot about how certain mainstream artists aren't being as politically active as they like their music to sound. Um, to which J. Cole took offense to, thinking that these were um, tweets directed towards him. Um, and so he responded in song. And then No Name responded in song as well and absolutely bodied Cole in about a minute and a half. So um, I'm curious to see what you guys think about this one. So I'm, I'm going to go on the record, and I haven't posted this on Facebook. I don't think No Name absolutely bodied I, I, I don't see where that happened. Um, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in the minority of this discussion where I don't think Cole's song, well, I don't think Cole destroyed her. Um, but I think they both look pretty stupid right now. <laughs> um, I think they're both calling each other out for things that they're guilty of and not realizing it. Um, at least Cole is owning up to it a little bit. Um, but you can't say, oh, with all this shit that's going on right now, you're writing a song about me while writing a song about him. You feel me? Like, that just doesn't make sense to me. Um, J. Cole's song, like, No Name Song, if I had to go back to it, like, lyrically, yeah, she, she did better. But Cole's was more intuitive to me. Um, it, was, it, was more, uh, it, it was more almost, like, honest. Like, she was just taking jabs at him. His wasn't a diss track. Hers, to me, sounded a little bit more like a diss track. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that both songs exist. But I don't think it. I don't think either artists are using their platform for what they think they are right now. No name has a book club that you could join for about five to ten dollars, 
um, a month where you read U.S. Black history books that were banned from schools and that weren't taught. She's, she's doing more than like the average artist is. Her music represents it just as much as Cole does. Um, but she thinks that she's on a higher level sort of education or more wokeness or like she's more important to the black community, which I just don't understand. Um, and Cole, to me, jumped the gun. She never mentioned Cole's name. And he let the blogs and the Twitter mentions get to him. And he took it personal. When Kendra didn't make a song, Mick Jenkins didn't make a song. None of these artists that are advocating black pride on all their albums um, took it took it the way that Cole did, which I think hurts him in a way. I, I think, think it I don't know though about the Kendrick. I think Kendrick took it some type of way. I, he he himself didn't directly respond, but um, the yeah. the head of the label, um, that someone would, had had tweeted out about when is Kendrick gonna drop, or now's the perfect time for Kendrick to drop, and they responded by saying, you know. Y'all don't y'all don't appreciate it, so it's not happening. Um, and it, it very much seemed like, because uh, it was right around the time of the Cole response meeting, it seemed like a response from them kind of saying, like, y'all don't appreciate the politically charged music or whatever that Kendrick puts out, so he's not going to drop it right now. I think, I think, um, I agree with what you're saying, and I saw Punch say that. That can't, to me, be a direct response of just no name saying that i think it's more so the people in the mentions and the blogs picking it up and carrying on this narrative as if it's even plausible that cole and kendrick and these artists don't benefit the black community like of course they're profiting off of like they're they're making money off of talking about the struggle which you can say that's exploiting it but in more ways than one music has always been a part of black history and it's got us through the deepest and darkest times um, that we've ever experienced, you feel me? So if you're gonna say they're exploiting or just capitalizing off of it without putting their money where their mouth is, I would challenge that. I would I would completely challenge that. I haven't seen anybody tweet about any of these the, these black women around the country getting taken and presumably put into sex traffic um, markets, um, things like that. I, I don't expect things like that from rappers. It's cool when they do, I, I appreciate you taking stances like that and speaking out publicly, but you cannot you cannot expect that out of every single artist. Um, I think that they do a good job of of putting their money where their mouth is and backing up their actions um, and not only their music. And even when they don't, Cole admitted, like in the most honest way that you possibly can, that I need to do better. Like you're absolutely right. Um, I need to do more. Um, I'm just a nigga that raps. And I don't think people li- I don't think people are taking that for what it is. I'm just a nigga that raps. It's it, it can't be more sincere. It can't be more indicative and represent every single person in the game. Until um, like not everybody's killer Mike or Chuck D. You feel me? I mean, I guess I just feel like as much as you'll say like, oh, J. Cole doesn't brand himself a conscious rapper. I feel like in a way he does. He kind of owns that. Yes, I, I, I never said that. J. Cole brands but like, him. But what, I'm, but what I'm saying is, like, then why would he... I just feel like if... Why, like, the reason No Name made a song is because J. Cole made a song. And No Name kept it to less than one minute. She got her points across and mostly talked about other shit that was going on. I feel like it's a totally different situation and she called out so like when i first heard snow on the bluff obviously i really liked it i still like it um but the things that no name called out made me question like my own patriarchy you know what i mean it made me say say you know maybe i liked certain things about this song that weren't necessarily the right message and i i think that there are certain things that j cole was saying um that i agree with but like uh, the one line that really bothered me was uh, at the beginning when he said, "There's something about the queen tone that's bothering him." I, I like heard, the, I really didn't like that. Like that's I, that's does did, come off as gaslighting. Did you did you not like that the first time you heard it, or until you heard No Name's perspective? I had to no. I had to go back and listen to it like like 
the fourth time I probably heard it, I noticed it, and that was the first. That was the first line that bothered me before No Name's perspective. When No Name put her perspective out, is when I had more issues with it. That was really the only issue I had with it until No Name's perspective. So, his story, like this, is just something that's unspoken, um, and should be amongst all communities. But at least in the black community, you don't check a black woman on her tone. You you don't like you, they're they're some of the most strong. They, they are the most strong people on this planet. You feel me? Um, so I understand that that that's a weird line. Um, it, it's weird, and it is patri- it, it, You can you can say it's patriarchy. It probably is, but at the end of the day, I feel like if it was a dude who said it, he would have said there. He wouldn't have called him a king, maybe, but he would have said there's something about his tone that's bothering you. You feel me? You think he would have said that about a guy? Yeah. What dude? Listen, I don't think that. Listen to 1985. He what? Is, what is he saying? You guys are well, saying, "Hey Cole, I don't like how it sounds." Like, let me school you guys real quick. You feel me? He's never gonna come out his mouth and say and 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 try to intentionally diminish another African American male or female. I think I don't think he intentionally did it. I think it's like it's it's like uh. It's like I I can be unintentionally misogynistic. I think most men can be unintentionally unintentionally misogynistic because of how we are raised and what this country is like. So well, I just think what you that see on television is, and produced in music and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and too. it's and it's part of and it's part of what J Cole admitted. I agree. Is like he was like I don't know everything. Like I do have that type of privilege that like I don't understand. And that was my favorite part. The most personal part of the song is where he was like I'm not at the end where he's like. I'm not doing enough. And I fuck with that. Like I still I'm I'm not like talking shit about the song. I just think that like I don't know. I think no names hit way harder with way less. So I think if you listen to Snow on the Bluff, J. Cole probably raps for a minute and a half. I think that I, I think maybe two minutes max. Um, but I don't I don't think he's rapping for crazy longer than no name. Nah, yeah, you're right. Nah, you're right. It's louder and he's packing more words in per bar. Um, so it drags on longer. Um, I, I would say, I, like, No Name basically checkmate Cole. Like, she made what he said not matter. But I still fuck with what Cole said. You know what I mean? I, wish, I do too. I wish neither of them dropped a song. Cole should have never dropped a song to it. I'm happy it exists because I like the song itself. But I don't think, I, I think it, more, it did more harm than good. Um, I, I think he should have DM'd her. Like, he should have hit her up. Exactly. I mean, if you really felt that personal about what she's saying, and you really felt like it was really a Cinderella moment, in my opinion. Like, he took it personal because the shoe fit. He really felt like when she's talking about, ooh, I hurt his ego, and he had to go put a verse down. He's hurt now. Like, oh, he has to, all this shit going on, he can't open his mouth to make a song about some protests or rioting, but he that's, has... That was my favorite point. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it makes Cole's song irrelevant. It doesn't really matter at that point. But I still like Cole's song more. It's almost like... Uh, what, so, what? Let, let, me, let, me, let me say this comparison loosely. It's like Adidon versus Duffy. Like, just some of the points that Pusha T made there's no, there's nothing you can say to it, um like it, it it's like it was it was checkmate like nothing that Cole says now can even retaliate to what No Name said. I agree on that point, but I don't think it was because of some I rap way better than you. I think it was just intellectually you didn't think about what you just did before you did it. You know what I mean? It was tone deaf from Cole, and he should have DM'd her. They should have solved this. Yeah, he should have DM'd her. He should have said, and then he should have come out with a song like No Name said to like actually talk about those issues instead of talking about her. And that was my favorite. That was the one that I didn't think about like before she put that song out. That was like what was really like wow when she said that. Like like you're making a song about me right now and the, like, all this shit's going on. And like the I know you made the argument like oh like well she made a song about him. 
but she, he's she's been tweeting nonstop. She's been on the front lines. Like she's been doing her shit. You feel me? Yeah. How else was she going to get people? Because to be fair, like I didn't when the Snow on the Bluff song came out and I first heard it, I didn't understand. It went way over my head. Like I did not know he was saying anything about No Name because I had no idea about this beforehand. It wasn't until the next day when the blogs had picked it up. I was like, oh, and I the, then when I listened to it. I heard like everything and you hear it and you're like, oh shit, what is like, this makes no sense coming from him in, in a lot of ways. Um, and so for her, I feel like what else was she supposed to do? Because people weren't paying as much attention to her social media and stuff. How else are you going to make sure? Could you imagine if J. Cole and No Name linked up for a collab for a time like this? Do you exactly. know, know how impactful that could have been for like right now? I think like, it'll it might still happen. I think this could push it to potentially happen, depending on how mad either one of them actually are, or if they're willing to set aside whatever pe- petty frustration they have to make something Jay that can be it. super impactful. Then yeah, they should. I told I, told I don't my, know if no one yeah, would do it, but J Cole would do it. Yeah, I, I told my girl yesterday yesterday the same exact thing um, that I think that um, this was setting up the stage not intentionally. But this just set up the stage perfectly for a No Name and J. Cole collab about the times. Um, and whether No Name genuinely wants to do it or not, she should because it'll be a significant career move. Um, she doesn't strike me as the type to do clout chasing things um, or to do something just to boost herself up. But I just think from a pure business angle and what, could, what it could represent for the community if they put their minds together um, instead of cause more divide. Um, because now people are even just are like we're sitting here debating about it. We have different points. Not everybody's mm-hmm. as civil as us. There's people on the internet right now cursing each other out over no name and J Cole. You feel me? Black people cursing other black people out about two tracks. Yeah. A different. And, that, and that's that might be the biggest reason why we'll actually see something from them because I think both of them will recognize that and see that they need to do something to to stop that as as quickly as they can because. It, it, it's such a strange thing. And even beyond, like, helping her career, like, helping her message. Like, Cole is obviously going to get whatever she wants to say about the protests and everything out to a bigger audience than what she has if she were to release a, a conscious project all by herself. If you have Cole on one project or one song that is conscious, like, more people are going to tune into that than probably a whole no-name album. Um, and this, so... I mean, and that's that. That's not a discredit to her. That it's just if you want people to hear your message, utilize someone who also does the same type of thing to project that message. But I seriously, I, do I don't that. blame her for being upset. I thought that, like, you're right. It's checkmate because Cole was just wrong. Like sometimes one person is right and one person is wrong, and when you're wrong, sometimes you just got to shut up and apologize. And that's basically what he did. That's one thing. Like I, I don't think. No name is just right in this situation, except for on the dish. She was she was right on the dish track, but I don't agree with um, like I don't want to I don't want to I'm scared to say I don't agree with her tone, but I feel like, like I feel like she could have worded her what she was saying in a way that was more productive. But I feel like if you don't go straight in not necessarily attack mode, but if you're not as straightforward as can be sometimes then people won't really get what you're saying. It won't cause the type of reaction you need to get a reaction from somebody else. Like, she got a reaction from Cole. She got a reaction from Kendra. It might not be the reaction she was expecting, but it happened. And I'm sure there's other artists right now that that took what she said to heart as well. Um, Because I think she just, she didn't do a good job of saying it's not everybody. Like, I, I think that she just casted everybody as exploiting and capitalizing off black culture right now without putting their money where their mouth is. And maybe I'm reading too far into it, but I just I, I wouldn't say that she's just overall right in this situation. Um, but she does. She does have so many good points that I feel like I read it differently, though. Like, I feel like. I feel like she wasn't saying everyone, and I feel like just the way that she put it was so blunt that that's how people took it. And I, I guess I can kind of like... You said your favorite rappers, if I remember correctly. Like, your favorite rappers, which which is almost everybody. It's me? hard for me, man, to, to go against what she's saying because probably like 
three days before this became a huge controversy, I was like borderline ready to to almost say the same type of thing. Like a lot of the people who are supposed to be conscious and supposed to be about this type of thing, you don't see so much from them. And even if they are in the streets, your platform isn't as a protester. Your platform is as a musician. Utilize your platform, or if you want to help and you want to actually make change, shouldn't you be trying to get your message out to as many people as you possibly can, not just going to protest? Like, for it it becomes difficult. Do you think it's like, do you think that you like, of course, you don't give them the bonus points, but are you really taking points away from artists that aren't full time activists? Uh, no, but I am. It, it's hard. You have to look at someone like Kendrick and Cole specifically in, in some type of way when they're not putting out when they're it, they put out that type of music when shit like this isn't happening. You really expect me to believe that they have nothing, nothing yeah. they could possibly say. And then even yep. at this point, the only thing you can say is a response to someone saying you have nothing to say. It, it, I, yeah. But listen, I could be I could be completely wrong. Oh. But when Michael Jackson dropped We Are the World, I don't think that nigga was in the streets protesting. But I think he did so much more by dropping that track than he could have by being in the streets protesting. Exactly. But they they have to drop tracks. They're going to drop albums. They're going to drop tracks like that. That they're rappers. You feel me? You can't put a you can't put a time stamp. And I guess that's not really No Name's point. So her point is that they should be in the streets and should be doing, or at least doing more to be politically active. That's all I'm saying. Like, when, when Michael Jackson dropped We Are The World, which literally put a Band-Aid on the fucking earth for temporarily, I don't think he was in the streets protesting. When, but when he did one. He did one. Like, that's the point. Is that, like, They're doing neither. When no, James they, they, they popped out. That's, a, that's, what, that's where it becomes difficult and where I'm glad I didn't say anything early on. I've seen Cole at one protest, and I've seen Kendrick at a protest. I, I've seen them at protests. But, like, now dating back to 2015, that when too. James when James Brown dropped "I'm Black and I'm Proud," that I don't think that nigga was on the front lines, bro. I think that the music and the healing that it brings to the community. We're in a completely different age right now, but music itself is supposed to heal. We don't let music heal us the same way that we used to. You feel me? But back in the day, and granted, it's a different time. We have more. We have a bigger platform, social media, all that. I understand that, but. Some of the most influential and important songs in black history for modern hip hop, R and B, soul, all of that, the the artists who made them were not on the front lines. You feel me? Like we know artists that are known for for what they represent to black culture, but they were not the activists that we're putting or, or that, that we're making J. Cole out to be or Kendrick out to be. We didn't put that type of pressure on. We're in 2020 and I understand we want to up the bar. But I still think it's it's somewhat of an unfair precedent, especially when, like, w- w- George Floyd was, what, a month ago? Like, these things are maybe even less. Like, we're still happening. He could be working on some masterpiece video right now that we, we might not ever see anymore because of this situation. You feel me? Um, so that that's just one perspective that I feel um, that, that hasn't I haven't seen spoke about. I, I know a lot of artists who made some of the most influential black songs in history that were not on the front lines, like we're making these artists out to be. Mm. Yeah, it just, it does, it, it becomes tough because while, while you're right, there, there have been artists who were, you know what I mean? And who, who like, like we're speaking at this level of, like, We Are The World is one track, and it did, it, it was that Band-Aid for a moment in time. Cole has put out multiple tracks like this. Kendrick has a whole project that people look to as as inspiration for the black community and the plight that they've gone through and everything. So for now at this point, like, it, it, how is there nothing right now? How 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 could there have been nothing up until someone called you out on it? And, and it, it's not just these two artists, but like, it, it it is difficult too because when you look at the praise Lil Baby got when he dropped that that track and was in the video to accompany it because it shows him there in the streets being a part of what's going on, like it, it kind of all came together as something you could appreciate even though he was never really portrayed as that beforehand, at least not not to someone like me, not to the casual fan. Uh, so it, it's tough when you see a Lil Baby doing it, but you you don't get anything from Cole. 
or Kendrick or and you're right. It's only that's been why, a month, but a month Anthony is a long Fantano time. Anthony Fantano said he was like fucking little baby. That's what Anthony Fantano said when he made a, a video about the J Cole song. He was like, he was like, dude, fucking little baby has become like the guy for this, and not and like you didn't make a song about it. I, I and that's kind of how I feel. It's like it's like little baby can do it, and J Cole can't. Bro, I mean, like, but at the same time, Black Thought hasn't dropped a song. Royce hasn't dropped a song. McJankins common, quiet as a fucking mouse. You feel me? But they like, don't have the they don't have the fan base to actually incite yeah, people to like platform. go out. And I agree with you. I understand what you're saying, but they like they're the reach for a Cole and a Kendrick and the things that they could do by by putting out a track that would get radio play or would get way more play than even Lil Baby or Meek did the same thing, but his track isn't getting that, that kind of play. Like a Cole or a Ken or even both of them together because that would that would be ideal. That'd they be like that would get all kinds of attention. It would it would it would re almost revitalize a, a movement that right now has kind of slowed down. So I, I two things. I think that this chalks up to with great power comes great responsibility. And I like I would just be remiss to say that J. Cole and Kendrick are irresponsible with their platforms. They could be more responsible, um, always, but I think it's a great with great power comes great responsibility type of thing. Number two, YG went out and shot a video at a protest too. Um, and he got called a clout chaser. And like he was just out there. So to capitalize off the Black Lives Matter movement, he brought two thousand people out to California for one video shoot. Um, I can't remember the exact location, but the video hasn't came out, and I'm sure it's because of all the negative publicity he got. To see J. Cole and Kendrick at protests, um, I'm sure they could have shot a video just like Lil Baby, but I'm sure what they're worried about is doing more harm off capitalizing off a situation like this um, than, like, was, which one of you guys brought up the Don Lemon uh, and Dave Chappelle thing? Was it one of you guys? I don't think so. No, it was someone on the on the post though. I, I saw, uh, it. and then I saw, I, and then I listened to a quote. Dave Sh- Don Lemon was calling out artists for using for not using their platform to speak up right now, and Dave Chappelle did a whole stand up, and it, 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 he was just like, "Nigga, I'm a fucking comedian. I'm letting the nigga. I'm a, I'm gonna say what I have to say through my platform, through my art that I do, and I'm gonna leave the activist shit." To the niggas that are on the front lines that have the ability to actually sway. If niggas say what, if I, if I say it, people will hear me, but it's going to be funny. I'll reach my audience, but it's not, it's not what they're here for. And I, I, some people might disagree with that, but I feel like the sentiment is true. Um, and it's honest from somebody in a position like that. Um, I think that people like Dave Chappelle, people like J. Cole, People like Kendrick. I don't. I don't think that they've been necessarily irresponsible with their platform, and I feel like their art has always shown where their morals lie. Um, and yeah, that that's the only reason I, I've ever had any type of feelings about this. Um, or why? Yeah, I, I, Cole. And I wouldn't call it irresponsible either. I guess I just think that they could. I, I think J Cole dropping that track was irresponsible. Yeah. And I, um, I, the thing that that I will say, like he doesn't utilize his platform in an irresponsible way, is he then very quickly realized it and apologized rather than just like it was it was kind of a, a lame apology because he was like I still stand by everything I said in that track but here is my apology following that um but you got to stand by what you what you think or what you believe and to an extent guys like Cole and Kendrick who through like Ants right from 2014 they even even probably before they've been in the streets protesting and doing shit like that so at, at what point is it fair to discredit them for not doing something that we've seen or that has been broadcast in a major light. Like at what point is it fair to to tell them they're not doing enough now, but they've done something what? before. Like, so it, I would, I would be disrespected if I was them. I would be a little bit frustrated, but I think the way Cole went about it just is where it's like you guys said, irresponsible. When, when one girl goes missing, another one girls uh, goes missing. You feel me? Like, I feel like she had a point and that's a tough, that's a subject that she touches on a lot on her Twitter. And I think, that specifically hasn't been spoken. Sex trafficking is, is at a fucking all-time high right now, and it's something that never gets talked about in mainstream media, especially by celebrities. Um, and I think that point specifically, especially with what's happening with black people right now, um, the travesty that's going on to black women and women all around the world right now, 
is an especially touchy subject for her. Um, and I can tell that she's upset that nobody has outwardly spoken on that. But then I would just direct to something like Keisha's song from Kendrick. You feel me? Um, it's not exactly the same thing, but they've touched on subjects like this um, throughout their whole career. Like, it, it, it's, just, it's just a little bit weird to me. Like, they're, they're right to feel offended or even just salty, their egos to be hurt, because I understand that. But I agree that Cole did go about this the wrong way. He should have never dropped the track. Um, and if it, well, he could have addressed it in a completely different way that probably would have resonated better. Well, and at the end of the day, we don't even know that she was definitely in those tweets talking about them. Like, we don't know that she was definitely talking about J. Cole and but Kendrick. Like, I, would have to, I would have to give it, like, a point zero one percent chance. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm, – if I was J. Cole, I would take that personally. You feel me? I, I, there's I, only a handful of mainstream I, favorite artists that would fit that, that definition of people who really should be out there right now. So, it, it, it's just – yeah. Very, very niche group. Um, and – I, I don't think that there's it, – it's really if the shoe fits, bro, and if the shoe fits for J. Cole, um, the shoe fits for Kendrick, um, if, you, if you make it fit. It um, is, it's it's a- weird, though, because, again, to, to understand their frustration with being um, talked about in this way, like – would would Lil Baby be able to drop a track like this right now if they hadn't done what they've done up until this point? Um, like they've they've helped break down a lot of barriers within mainstream music, and they're they're obviously not the first ones. They are fortunate from artists who have done this prior to them. But it's getting to a point where now we can actually have tracks like this played on the radio or or emphasized within the mainstream. And th- would that be possible without Kendrick and Cole continuing to to live to hold that um, in a main to a mainstream audience? So. I I, it, I understand their frustration, but like I said, it's just there's a hundred ways you could have handled this better than dropping a track, even though that's what you do. Like, you don't, I, mean, it, I don't know. Can, can, I mean, everybody that's not J. Cole handled it better than J. Cole. You feel me? Like, he, he, he really is a, he's the 1A loser, and No Name's the 1B loser. Um, but No Name actually benefited from this in many ways. I do not see how J. Cole benefited from this in any way. Um, I, I can point out a couple. Like, he learned, bro. That's it. That's well, a benefit, that, but it's not <laughs> nothing you can I, gain from it. This is something that I don't think J. Cole is unaware of. <clears throat> feel me? I think it's something that now he's looking in the mirror more so and probably is going to have to publicly make a change. Um, but this is something that I think artists are at least aware of. When you, when you make music on a certain subject, um, it, it, it's a lot different to touch on a certain subject and to be out in the streets. They're, and they're out in the streets. Like, I'm sure, like, Chance has had meetings with mayors of Chicago and has tried to advocate for so much different type of reform. Like, you see what Kanye and Kim Kardashian can do with Trump. You feel me? Once you get to that elite status, the level and the network that you have is so much different that you actually can effectively make change at least better than anybody else. So I understand wanting that out of people um, and even expecting it to them from to a certain extent, um, but it has to be to a certain extent. You feel me? That, that's just how I feel. You mentioning Kanye okay. kind of makes me think about the point, though. Can, can you blame people for being frustrated at the, at the Kendricks and the Coles when we had Kanye actively out there doing stuff? Like, it, like Kanye, of all people, who was who was super Trump. Like everyone was anti Kanye just a year ago, and now he's on the he's in this position, actually out there helping, despite the negative publicity he had, the negative reactions he was getting to people. He he got back out there. Cole and Kendrick. Oh, co- correct me if I'm wrong, but name something that and educate me, like if I really don't know. But name something that Kanye did that was extra, um, or that. J. Cole and Kendrick didn't do besides pay for the funeral services for George Floyd. That, like, yeah, that's fair. He, I, I like they. He was at. He was caught by media at a protest fighting with it, fighting with his brothers in his hometown. You feel me? Like, and he did donate. Um, I don't know if J. Cole or Kendrick have donated. Um, I can assume that they have. Um, it just wasn't to this speci- or, or, or particularly relevant situation. You feel me? Or to a particular family struck by something like this but i can't name something that kanye did besides that donation that j cole and kendrick didn't 
Yeah, I mean, that that's fair, especially in this point. I mean, we've seen Kanye and his wife kind of actively working with the president to get, like, to actually make some type of change and getting people released. And, like, it, granted, it has made him, it almost has turned so many people against him. But, it, and who knows, in turn, it looks like, at least at this point, that it was kind of Kanye's plan to, to utilize whatever relationship he had with Trump to help out people that were... Um, fucked over by the justice system. So, but you're right. At least at this point in time, my my point of bringing it up was more so that like Kanye has had everyone turn on him and wasn't even viewed like in the past. Yes, he was very much like the conscious guy, especially sticking up for people in the black community. But over the last couple of years, he's kind of looked a different way. And so to see him come out so quickly and do something, uh, yeah. it's it's like how come these guys who have been doing so much more up until this point aren't doing more than him? So the, the Trump thing and what he's been doing with pardoning people and working on police reform, bailouts, all that shit, that's, that's a real thing. But he was doing that well before these protests happened. You feel yeah. me? So, so currently right now, um, I, I, that, that's a little bit old. I just had a point that I wanted to fucking make, and it, it lost me as I said that. Um, so share it and say some thoughts. I'm going to try to collect what I just had. Well, I basically just... I kind of agree that Kanye, he hasn't really done much up until now. Like, he's done a couple things. Um, and I just feel like while it's what he did was great, I, I need to see him do, doing more. And, like, I'm a huge Kanye fan. But, like, I just think that in general, um, he needs to do more after all the things that he's been doing kind of in the last couple of years. I think that I think that Kanye showing up to a black uh Black Lives Matter protest in Chicago and donating to George Floyd's family is that gets blasted on TMT. That's get, that gets blasted on Double XL because it's polarizing. You see his actions from the past year and then you see this and it sparks conversation. But when J. Cole and Kendrick hit the protest, not one blog site covered it. You just see some random pictures go viral on the internet because that's expected. Nobody's trying to talk about J. Cole at a protest or Kendrick at a protest um, because what's the news in that? Like when, yeah. when Kanye pulls up, that's a different story, though. But we all are going to know about that because what the fuck? The Trump support in black men uh, is going to pull up and support Black Lives Matter. Um, that's that. That's just how I look at it a little bit. Yeah, my my biggest point with bringing Kanye up was simply just like, had Kanye done nothing, I don't think anyone would have batted an eye. They wouldn't have attributed Kanye I, to this to this type of situation. So, I, mean, I think I think I still think No Name's tweet applies to Kanye as well. Yeah, like I, you feel me? Like I, I think that literally everybody except Cole responded properly. Even Punch tweeting that niggas don't appreciate it, even if that's a response at No Name, it, like they're in their right to tweet that. But to come out and openly uh, just, I guess, cha not, not necessarily chastise, um, but to take away from her message, which is a decent message at the end of the day, it just wasn't conveyed in a way that sat well with everybody. Um, but what she's saying is important and needs to be said. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have talked about Cole for quite a minute now, but we'll probably continue talking about him as we jump to this next conversation. We've decided to introduce more of a debate between the three of us for every episode. We're going to debate a subject. This week's subject is which artist has the most insufferable fan base. Um, this one, this one is, is, is somewhat tough, I think, when you get down to it, but I think we each have a couple that will come right to mind. Um, Sheridan, go ahead. Go ahead and start off with your J. Cole rant, and we'll, we'll move on. No, that. I'm going to surprise y'all. I think Eminem has the worst fan base. Definitely. That's <laughs> And, like, I like Eminem a lot more than I like J. Cole. Um, not recently, but, like, in just in terms of overall discography, I like Eminem a lot more. I think he's a lot better of a rapper. But his fan base is easily the largest... I, I wouldn't say, like... <laughs> I don't know. I guess when I think of my, I, I think of Mountain Dew and I think of Monster Energy and I think of Blue Subaru WRXs, um, and I think of Closet Racists. Um, I don't know. Not like everyone who's an Eminem fan. I love Eminem again, but like I don't know. 
Are you they a- support him to the end, and I think he has the most fans. I think he has the most fans of any other rapper that doesn't like other rappers. Like only likes him. Okay, so that that's what happens when you cross white people into hip hop. You feel me? You you bring them into something else, and a lot of white people that listen to him, uh, even my girl, bro, and she's she's not white in the slightest, like at all. She has no white in her. She she moves up from Florida. And the only rapper that she's really ever listened to um, for Joy was Eminem. Like, the only rapper that she can name more than 10 songs from or that she was bumping on her iPod was Eminem. Um, he was so mainstream, especially with that run he did with No Love, um, the Love the Way You Lie, uh, the yeah. World. Like, there, there was a time when Eminem was literally anything he did was the biggest thing in the world, you feel me? Um, so... I, I agree. Eminem's fan base makes it hard to put him where he is right now. Especially um, they, now, because right now they try parading, like, like the, rec- the most recent Eminem album wasn't bad, but they try pretending every Eminem album is, is the fucking best thing that dropped that week, and it's just, no. Bro, and I'm a, Eminem was the first rapper I ever listened to. Um, Eminem used to talk about his mom in a very disparaging form, and I grew up uh, with very disparaging feelings towards my mom. So Eminem resonated with me differently. He's one of the rappers who made me want to rap. I have, I, have so much, I have bias towards Eminem. And until I was probably 16, 17, I, I put him here and everybody else was right here. Like, I didn't even compare rappers to Eminem. Um, but mm-hmm. I, know, I know there are many rappers today that are actually better than Eminem, which is a weird thing to say. Um, and I, I'll debate people if they want. It's a matter of preference. He's one of the most technically skilled people ever. Um, but his fan base does does act like he can do no wrong. And they're typically not too versed in hip-hop in general. Um, at least all walks of hip-hop. I know a lot of... M- I like not to classify everybody, but typical Eminem fans cross over with like NF and the Joyner Lucases and the like Tom McDonald's even, you feel me? At least nowadays. Um, I rarely see the black community defending them and them, which which is kind of a shame, but I understand why. Um, Nicki Minaj comes to mind immediately. Um, I, re- I, really hate, I really hate the bar with her. I'm not gonna- <laughs> but the, I, I think one of the reasons why is because Nicki uses them in some sort of an irresponsible fashion. Um, she, she, she will have her fan base attack certain people and artists and ideas and she almost controls them to think a certain way. Um, and any female artist that comes up that's not Nicki Minaj, they're just going to tear down and act like they never have a chance of any type of success because Nicki exists. Um, they act like Nicki can do no wrong. Um, there are similar reasons that you have shared in, except that I just really don't like. They, they have a lack of respect, typically, when I speak to a Nicki Minaj fan. They don't, they don't want to talk about how mediocre some of them is, uh, they they just go straight to attacking you as a person. <laughs> so that's I'm about to start doing that, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> that's what niggas think I do, bro. Like, <laughs> nah, people will, yeah, people will like attack your like opinion, or no, like you'll like kind of be like your opinion's just kind of ridiculous, and then they'll start, they'll take that personally and then go personally at you. Exactly. It's like, bro. I was yeah. like, when when you have. But I definitely disagree with. I think the barbs can be ridiculous, but I don't think they're one of the worst. They're they're definitely up there. Um, uh, I think well, that the, they get crazy, man, and that's and for someone who's not even super active anymore, they still ride and they're they're deep. So it, it's it, and it it's in a way it's kind of cool, but in a way like we talk about utilizing your platform responsibly and shit like. In in a day where social media and like online bullying and shit like that is so prominent, you don't you don't really want to be the artist who's out there pushing the, your fans to do that to people just because they pissed you off that day or whatever. And and she has the power to do it, whatever. But it it, it is when you when you see a fan base so willing and able to do that. I mean, shit, you see it with the with the Beehive too. It's like there are fan bases that are ready to ride for whoever they are diehards for. And if you say even something slightly against them then you're going to just get dragged and it, depending yeah, on how nah, famous Beyonce you are you're going to get dragged hard the, the barbs and the beehive are almost like one and the same 
Um, I think that uh, yeah. I think the difference is that Beyonce doesn't use her platform to destroy other people sometimes. Like that's she doesn't that's, push it. It still happens, but she doesn't. She doesn't do it, it publicly. She does it behind. I think she does it behind the scenes, though. I think she can be a little sneaky. There's a lot of people that are doing it behind the scenes, but when you post on Twitter to three million people and you say "fuck this person" or you take this person down or you say how you feel and it's so biased, it's, I think that. I, I don't know. Um, I would I would just put the Barb's and the Beehive in a similar category, except Nicki Minaj contributes more to the way that her her fans think than Beyonce does. I think Beyonce fans will just defend her till death because they love Beyonce. Do you think Beyonce fans would defend Beyonce if she did a track with Takashi? Yeah. I, well, well, Beyonce doesn't have to follow the rules of hip hop, but she also would never because Jay Z. Well, her yeah. Husband. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just saying from like that perspective of the of the fan because you saw like with Nikki and the Barb's, they kind that was kind of the first time you saw the Barb's be like, well, at least not everyone. Obviously, we got Sheridan over here still riding with Takashi and Nikki, but th- there were definitely an outspoken portion of, of the, the Barb's who were against that, you know. So I I, I don't think uh, maybe because simply because Jay Z is her husband. Um, but I think that singers don't have to necessarily follow the street codes of hip hop mm-hmm. or street codes of life in general. You feel me? Um, especially somebody who's just as commercially successful as Beyonce. It's just hard to even picture a reality where that's. Oh yeah, that. it's a it's well, super I mean, fantasy gonna, land. But yeah. Well, did you see anybody saying "fuck Akon"? Yes. What? Yes. Yes. What? Absolutely. I, 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 the, I it was the first time in my life Akon. I saw people be like, "Fuck I, Akon's I, music," but the person Akon is great. That's what I saw a lot of. I, I even saw niggas talk about "fuck Akon," and this nigga just sold out Africa to the Chinese government, like because of locked up. Like I saw, I saw niggas. Te- I never thought I'd see the day that Akon got torn down. I saw T Pain get tore down, and I was hurt by it. Well, Akon was one of like the last niggas there. And I know pe- I know people that will never listen to Akon again. That will forever know him as the nigga that collabed with Takashi Six Nine Nine. If, after- if the track after- drops, if the track drops, ah, bro, I know niggas now that feel like that, and maybe they won't feel like that in a year from now. But I've spoken to people that, despite every fucking thing that Akon's given us, this- despite all the activism that he's done in America and Africa, like they're ready to cancel this nigga because of fucking Takashi Six Nine. It is the most. Uh, so I didn't see that. I, I'm I'm in I'm in at least a hundred hip hop groups on. <laughs> like, weird I, flex, I, but okay. Uh, bro, I, no weird flex, but okay. <laughs> I, I talk hip hop with so many random people around the world, and I see every thought from every fucking person that's posting. And a lot of people shit post, but yeah. I've seen I've, I've seen viral posts with at least ten thousand shares and mad heart reacts and mad reacts, just saying fuck Akon, like. Yeah, I I absolutely saw like not a ton of local people, but there were there had to have been a couple local artists because I've seen some shit just on my timeline. It might not have been artists, just local locals in general. There were some people who were actively like fuck Akon. I saw saw four rappers in Cuse that we fuck with say that they're that Akon's cut off. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so then so the Takashi effect obviously is there, but I don't think it's gonna stop the Barb's from totally fucking with Nicki. I think that. Like, like she and she kind of. I, if this was maybe the first time she had ever worked with Takashi, but she just has a history of associating with shitty people. That it, it kind of just like is whatever. I mean, when 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 you consistently make music with with pedo- I almost <clears throat> said pedophiles, but he's a convicted pedophile, and your husband is a convicted pedophile. Um, it's just it's just weird to to defend that type of stance. Um, I would I would like to hear her opinion on that, to be honest. And I actually. I have actually, so it didn't really change yeah. my opinion. It, <laughs> I think I think she said, "Uh, the girl who, uh, the girl who charged her husband with rape lied about the whole story, and like got he got caught on a false rape allegation because they got caught having sex or something. Like it was really like, if you don't know that for a fact, I could not believe you saying that thing. It was almost really, really irresponsible." And damaging uh, to somebody that I think uplifts women, or at least paints that picture like she does. Another artist that doesn't have the most annoying fan base, but is approaching it, and I think we all were waiting for this one, was Joyner Lucas. 
Oh, yeah, um, dude. I, I have the recent interaction with a Joiner Lucas fan that immediately, that's why we have this topic even on the docket, because I was just, I'm, it's like, holy shit, foolish. with some Joiner fans, you can't talk about anyone else modern being conscious or or one of the top lyricists or anything. You can't, you almost can't say shit movies, about bro. any other artist without a, a Joiner fan being like, well, what about Joiner? What about Joiner? If, if you ask a Joiner fan, they'll tell you he has the best flow in the game. He's the best lyricist in the game. He's the best storyteller in the game. And he best makes the best videos. in the game. Like, you know, best they, music videos. They, best music. They were, they were lyric. Like, and granted, I, I, I talk shit about Jordan, bro. And I hope I meet this nigga one day so I can say all this to his face. Because it's, <laughs> it's, it's all with love. I think this nigga is so unbelievably good. And he just doesn't let himself go past where his current ceiling is and i feel like that's because of his fans because his fans have 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 him on this pedestal that he might think like i'm i'm already the greatest i'm already so great because he, he and he does have a pretty deep fan base himself so it's not just his fans though because when when you're saying in the booth with buster rhymes and eminem and voice the five nine and they tell you that you're one of the greatest of all time when you have fucking two projects out and fucking 15 yeah it's probably yeah I can only imagine his head is like, like, and that's that's something that's hard to deal with. However, just go to Facebook, go to a Joyner Lucas music video, and read the comments. These niggas is literally like Joyner. I pray to you, you <laughs> say, like I, I I'm going to see you at church on Sunday. Thank you, God. Let's pray to Joyner. Like it is, it is unbelievable, and I I, I respect that he's cultivated this fan base and he's touched so many people. Um, but it's honestly anybody that can like see through the shallowness of Joyner Lucas understands why that type of that narrative is so annoying. Mm -hmm. Even though I appreciate, like I'm glad they feel touched by him. I'm glad that they feel like he's the Messiah. But just from a particular rap standpoint, um, it, it's hard. It's hard to like argue with a Joyner fan because they won't listen. To, they it's almost like they can't hear. Any criticisms or flaws in his music? It's hard. Yeah, I don't know a time that Joyner's not really been a gimmick. So, <laughs> like, like I mean, maybe like so people say he was really his first couple of tapes were really good. I haven't really like ever cared to go and listen. Um, you can't. Not, hold up, hold up. Then you can't. I, I'm not gonna let you say that he's always been a gimmick. Thing. No, no, I said I didn't say that. I said as far as I know, like as long as I've known Joiner, he has been a gimmick. Like since he, I was introduced to Joiner by him doing those fucking remixes. Um, I don't remember the first one he did. It wasn't the mask off one, but he did a couple before that. Um, he did like Gucci Gang, like shit like that. And I just remember every time he did that shit, I was like, God, I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> And I didn't know who he was. I was just like, dude, I hate these remixes. I think they're terrible. I think they're they're clout chasing. I think that when he put out that Gucci Gang remix and then he was like, oh, yeah, but I fuck with Lil Pump. I'm like, you're a fucking idiot, dude. You just said, like, fuck him in that song. And then you're like, no, I fuck with Lil Pump. Yeah, no, he's a gimmick. His Most of his music's a gimmick. Uh, I, I don't really like almost anything that he's put out. Besides, I don't I will have to, I guess, go listen to his early shit. But I was going to say, like, it's hard to say you don't fuck with anything he's put out if you haven't heard his project specifically. Like, he has two projects, one project specifically, but two projects that are really fucking good. Really fucking good. Um, one of them is a phone number. Uh, it's seven some shit. It's not amazing. That's my second favorite Joyner project. But, all like, the songs are quality. He's dabbled in the mainstream shit, but he was still rapping and a little bit more raw than his last one. But I can't remember the, the tape. I think it's called like Almighty Joiner or like Road to Joiner. I, it, it's some shit. It has I think I've heard that one. Dog, and, that, sh that shit is fucking crazy. It really led me to believe Joiner was going to be like in this it, up there with the Kendricks and the Coles and the Mick Jenkins. And granted, I jumped the gun because I saw a couple music videos. Because I saw where his ceiling could be, um, I jumped the gun on the Joiner bandwagon. But I'm a firm believer that you're as good as your best. 
you just have to keep providing your best material. You feel me? Yeah, like, he's in a he's in a weird. Oh phase. no, I heard like, the phone number one. I heard the phone number one. I didn't hear the along came Joiner one. And the thing about Joiner, like I've been a fan of Joiner for mad long. Like prior to I think either either one of those projects, because I want to say it, it's been a while. I saw a music video he did. That was the first thing that introduced me to him. Um, telling a story about a friend getting killed or something like that. And it, it was so, like, crazy that it struck me. But it's almost like since that point, I've never had another point where I've been like, wow, this is better than that first introduction I had to join her. Like, everything has consistently been like, okay, this is good. Like, But he, he's he got a weird situation. It kind of happened to Cole and Kendrick early on when they, or especially Cole, where he wasn't really able to follow up with Friday Night Lights until he got to 2014 Hills Forest Drive. He was in this position where people were like, he's not that great, and Joyner hasn't been able to get that follow-up. Yo, hold up, hold up. I Hold up. So Born Sinner is not a good album? I'm not, I'm not I'm not saying good. I'm saying he was in a he hadn't put out Born Sinner was not better than Friday Night Lights. No, but uh, Born So he had uh, not he had not uh, gone past his peak even uh, so as at his point of dropping official albums compared to his mixtape, he had nothing to <laughs> go against his mixtapes yo, is what I'm saying. Um, I I yo I'm I, I I hear what you're saying and I I actually understand what you're saying now that you just now that you just elaborated a little bit more. But I will not sit here and say <laughs> Cole didn't deliver until 2014 for a so drive after Friday Night Lights. I, I cannot, I cannot I, say that. Born Sinner. I would say he I, delivered at the level that Joyner has delivered to his fan base. That I, I, I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm saying, and then um, when he followed up with 2014, he was really able to be looked at in a much different light. I don't know. I think Joyner, that there was like, there was a light switch that flipped between. Born Sinner and 2014 Forest Hills Drive, and I and I know I think, I'm not the only one who thinks this. But that, but oh man, I, this is uh, this is hard because I'm trying not to speak from a place of bias, and with having like both of you in a similar mind state, it's hard to not feel like I'm being biased. Like you don't feel like okay. Sheridan just enjoys the the lack no, of I me think, pushing bro, J Cole. For I once. think I think every single so. I think at one every single J Cole album mix and mixtape is better than and like other 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 yeah other other than I haven't heard the Joiner blah blah the first one. He put I'm out. not saying they're at the same level of of putting out music. I'm saying like he he's he Joiner's in a stagnant period the same way Cole was like and not even stagnant. I think I'm using the wrong words. I'm saying like he's not overcoming his peak that he already had, and it took Cole a while to overcome that peak that he had with Friday Night Lights. I like Born Sinner more than 2014. Bro, Born Sinner is a fucking amazing album. I, I like, I, 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 I okay, so I, I'm glad to hear that. I would say that Joey Badass is a better comparison in terms of going from your first album and trying to meet that standard with future music than than J. Cole is, you feel me? My um, I, my point is, like, if, if Joyner were to put out a critically acclaimed album at the level of 2014 Forest Hills Drive, it would kind of wipe out any, any like, I don't know, any negativity you could speak about Joyner. Because how he critically had, he had, acclaimed... Go ahead. How critically acclaimed was 2014, though? It was critical... 2014, if you go back to the reviews, they don't like it. Like, it, it was yeah. like... It was a mediocre good album, but I'll be I'll be damned if niggas tell me that that is not a bona fide classic. Like I can listen to that album. It's a hip hop classic. Like I guess sure. I'm not I don't know. Like, I'm not, not speaking not, from critiques. Like, I'm speaking like from like his fan base. Music. Like the Cole <laughs> fan base is uh, that's their that's their project. I'm not trying but to my... attack what you're saying, Andrew, because I I'm, I agree with you to a certain extent. I'm more so trying to like expand off. Of it. I think that from a rap perspective. I like Born Sinner 10 times more than, than 2014 Forest Sales Drive. I think that Cole cracked a formula on 2014 Forest Sales Drive. That was genius. And every single song to me, except Wet Dreams, which, which, uh, which was still one of the biggest hits, like, is, is, is unbelievable to me. I don't know what he did, but I think if you go back to Let Nas Down, he talks about how he tried to make a commercial switch and he feels guilty about it. I think that 2014 Forest Hills Drive was Cole's commercial switch with conscious music. Um, I think Born Sinner was Cole mainstream, but he had a couple of super mainstream singles and the rest were like rapper rap tracks. You feel me? 
he he had a he had a message. He was more raw and gritty on it, which appealed to me more specific. I think the formula 2014 for Sales Drive was absolutely genius and it'd be hard to replicate. I couldn't see Joyner coming up with anything like that just because I don't know Joyner. Listening to 2014, I feel like I know J. Cole. I feel like I've seen him through childhood and watched him grow up. I don't know Joyner's personal attributes. You but feel before me? I 2014 dropped, Cole fans would have had that same type of outlook towards Cole because you're talking about he was he was putting out a project, Born Center, trying to go the more mainstream way, and then whatever the name of the uh, the sideline story, that project beforehand felt even more like he was really reaching for that mainstream sound, like bringing in all kinds of features and stuff. And so I, I get what you're saying. I just think that I don't know. I think we agree with just saying it different ways. Yeah, I, I, exactly. Um, I like I I. I can't even. Cole World's my favorite. I, I I can't even imagine like at this point putting Joiner and J Cole or Kendrick in the same sentence. Like he has so much more to prove to me. When mm-hmm. I saw when I saw Eminem tweet and say that who who like somebody tweeted at Eminem. I don't know if you guys saw this. Yeah, his they, top ten or top five or some shit. No, they said who is the goat and who is the best rapper of all time, and he listed about twelve rappers. And Joyner Lucas was one of them. And it just, it hurt me. Like, uh, it, it made me happy to see it for him. And maybe M has heard a lot of shit that we haven't. He probably has. But it's like, I don't even think, I, I think that was irresponsible. But it was his, it was his opinion. You don't always have to say the right things. Um, but Do you think it's actually his opinion, though? Do you, or do you think he's just trying to gas him up? I, I mean, he might be trying to gas him up, but I don't think he, I don't think he's lying. I don't, I don't like, I don't think he lied about any of those names. Um, like he, I think he genuinely believes it. Um, he might, he might feel like he has a little bit left to prove, but even if you feel like that, I, I think it's too early to say that. If, if somebody said that Eminem was the best rapper of all time, which I'm sure they did, but social media didn't exist after his first album, his first official studio album, who knows where he would have been. I think M had to keep going through criticism and learn what the fuck he could do to be the best he could be. I don't think Joyner is being allowed the path to get better. I think he's going to become one of the most complacent and stagnant artists we've ever seen. Um, just simply because it's hard to stay humble and it's hard to keep being hungry when you're getting spoon fed everything. To you. you feel me? Yeah. And it's, work- it's, it's it's similar to what like on a on a much more minor level, like some local artists deal with this same type of situation, at least in my opinion, where he, I feel like Joyner peaked really, really early. I feel like he hasn't gotten much better from early on. And, sure. and so he had that, that big fan base and everything, and so he hasn't seen a reason to change up what he's doing. And some local artists will get 70000 on a track and be like, I'm good, I'm set, and then wonder why the next four don't hit. I think it, it's kind of on a much, much, much smaller level than what Joyner does. The same thing. He doesn't really change up a whole lot, and then will wonder why it's not hitting. Well, I don't... Well, I don't think Joyner is wondering why it's not hitting because I don't think I think Joyner truly believes everything he's dropping is hitting. Like, I I, I don't true. think I don't think he feels like he's failed yet because the negative comments, even though they're there, he has to know that people find him corny, and, and he has to know that if you go to his Spotify, the first similar artist is Tom McDonald and Logic. Like, you have to, you have to know that if you're Joyner Lucas. You feel me? I um, guess but I, I, go ahead. I don't think. Yeah, that has affected how he views himself, especially like what the fuck is Tom McDonald when Eminem just told me I'm the GOAT. Like yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I was gonna say. He's got guys like Eminem and, and like Will Smith wasn't the greatest rapper alive, but when even when you make a song about Will Smith and Will Smith loves it, that's all the that's all the validation you could possibly need. Like so I mean that that was huge. That's that's gonna go down as a legendary moment in hip hop, I believe. And I think it might be like joyous or one of Joyner's like Magnus Opus, Magnum Opus moments. Uh, what people don't realize though, and maybe they do, but they don't speak about it, is Joyner is the same age as Kendrick. And what the fuck has he done? Like that that's what I don't that's what I don't get. Joyner is 30 plus right now. Kendrick, I think, just just turned 32 or something. Like he has so much catch up to do. Um, same with J. Cole. I think J. Cole's a little older than both of them. But they're they're similar in age. 
like I Joiner, I I think he has one of the more most annoying fan bases for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, I agree. and it, it it's like Joiner. It's a weird thing too, because like you said, the Will thing is going to definitely go down as like a historic type thing, but it didn't necessarily translate to him taking that next step or to his project really doing anything at another level. It just kind of was still the same old Joiner thing at the end of the day. And I, I will, again, it's I don't know. I will never listen to the Will track if it's not the remix. Like I have no desire to listen to the Will track. <laughs> I haven't gone back. I listened to Joyner's album for a week straight, and not even because I, I really, really liked it. There were certain songs that I really loved. The outro is, is fucking amazing, in my opinion. Um, but I made sure, because I feel like I give certain artists unfair criticisms because of how good I think they can be. And I try to be honest with myself about that. So I listened to Joyner's album front to back at least one time a day for a whole week. and. This album was not it, bro. Like I, I had to, I had to cringe through it a lot of the times. Like it, it just wasn't indicative of any growth, besides for like I want mainstream success. Cole with 2014, the mainstream success and formula that he found, it, it is just so light years ahead of what of what Joiner. He has songs. Joiner is the king of making music that you listen to once and yeah. you don't want to go back to it even if it's good you just feel like you got everything from it you feel me um i i i, I rarely catch myself going back to join a lucas songs to really play except for his old shit and some songs sprinkled through projects yeah it's weird it, it kind of fits what we were talking about before we got to recording the show in the sense that joiner is one person who will make videos that would it makes so much more sense that the videos would have more streams than the track because you don't care as much about the track without the video and it happens with so many joiner songs it's almost like i don't know it, it takes it, it it almost pulls away the fact that he constantly does great videos almost pulls away from the rest of his tracks because the videos are what you're there for almost i can i can list I, I, I could probably list 25 rappers off the top of my head that are better than Jordan Lucas. And, and which is crazy to say because he could. Man, I could do 50. <laughs> like, I'm saying off the top of my head. You feel me? Like, definitively just better than Jordan Lucas. Yeah. Like, I think we're right down 100. Jordan Lucas does um, a lot of rap, and a, a lot of other rappers would criticize for. Um, I just don't see the criticism as, as abundant. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, Joyner Lucas fans, Nicki Minaj fans, J. Cole fans, I hope you're not too mad. But if I you mean, are, I, mean, I would literally not you. be surprised. That's why you're in this group of fans. Um, that, that covers our debate for this week. I want to ask everyone who's watching, make sure, give us some suggestions. What do you want to hear us debate about next week? You want to hear our top five artists upstate? We're going to need a lot of comments to push Ant to do that one. But if, if, if everybody who's tuning in says they want it, I bet you Ant will do it. Um, yeah, if everybody who's tuning in wants to know my top five upstate artists, then, then comment. We comment. get a good amount. Yeah. I'm going I'm to piss a lot of people off if I tell somebody my top five. Even so, more so. reason to comment that below. Um, but if you have any other suggestions of something we could debate, get to talking about, I think this was a really good conversation. Okay. But a, a lot of J. Cole talk, so I think we could wrap it up there. Um, we're going to jump in. Oh, go ahead, Ant. I, oh, no, I, I, I was just saying exactly. And I want to know what you guys thought, who has the most annoying fan base. Uh, yeah, because let us know. I'm sure you guys get into arguments and be pissed off talking to people like Oh, and I, I forgot. Sheridan didn't even say J. Cole. He said Eminem. We just drug J. Cole into the conversation unwillingly. Um, yeah. But yeah, so name name off whatever fan or whatever fan bases you think are the worst, because I'm sure I'm sure y'all got some. Uh, we're gonna jump into our tracks that we're playing every week. This week we're doing it a little bit different. Each one of us chose two tracks to play, uh, and then so we're each gonna introduce it. I'm going first. Our first track is gonna be a track by June Boy. Uh, this is Talon Thomas out of Binghamton, New York. He's been doing a lot of activism things. He just dropped a music video accompanying this that was taken and shot primarily um, during some of the protests that were going on in Binghamton, so that's really dope. I don't have the video, but I highly suggest going to YouTube and checking it out when you get the chance. But we're going to play the track. Are you, are you cutting? Yes.
nonsense shit. They talk about it, then I hear about it. I'ma rise up like the third day. Catch me outside like a porta potty. Won't sit here and act like I'm a superstar. So don't treat me different. I do this here, cause the Lord told me that I got a voice and I can make a difference. My timeline got murders on it. School doors on lockdown. Working hard on my prayer life. Cause everybody gets shot down and they all acquitted, not justified. So I'm looking to the church now. Somebody gotta rise up. Cause they done hit me where it hurt now. Let's go. Oh, yeah. We just gotta rise up, rise up. Oh, yeah. We just gotta fight up, fight up. Oh, we just gotta rise up, rise up. Oh, we just gotta fight up. Turn it down, turn it down, turn it down, turn it down. Jesus, keep taking the wheel. His family's out here missing me. Just to make a change, not to make a name, I don't need a I deal Be away, that's a brotherhood, I'ma hold it down like a brother should I speak for my people, that's, that's gone, strip from they mother love Yvette Smith, John Farrell, Mike Brown, Eric Gardner, Rakia Boy, John Crawford, Trayvon, Benjamin Martin, Stephon Watts, Tamar Rice, Larry Jackson This ain't new, they been doing this since 6'5", when I think of Jimmy Lee Jackson huh. Let's go We just gotta rise up, rise up ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied. We just gotta That's Rise Up by June Boy. Um, I, I really like that track, especially with everything that's going on. I like the music video that he's got uh, accompanying to it. Um, obviously, just a really good message. And Talon being at the forefront of everything that's going on in Binghamton, trying to really help um, push the community to keep being a part of the movement and stuff that's been going on. I felt like we should highlight this track. Uh, there, it, there, it wasn't it wasn't a perfect track. It wasn't like I was highlighting it because it's the best track I've heard. But it, it is one of the better um, tracks from Upstate I've heard in terms of just everything that's going on. And you always like to see people utilizing their platform in whatever ways they can. Absolutely. It's good to see Talon putting, uh, putting the music behind where his actions have been. You never have to question what he's about because he's been doing it um, this whole time. He's been, like you said, leading the forefront of Binghamton along with a couple powerful black females that I can't remember their name, um, but shout out to them as well. Um, the track itself, who was on the chorus? Was uh, it? If you give me two seconds, I'll look it up. Okay. Because I want to make sure to give him his credit. But I also that, that's also my biggest criticism of the track, to be honest. Um, it, Raff, it, it Raffy was, Wright. What was it? Raffy Wright. So shout out Raffy Wright. Um, the song, the message was amazing. Uh, Talon did his thing on the verses. I'm assuming that was him. Um, the bars were dope. The quality was really good. Um, I was not a huge fan of the singing, if I'm going to be completely honest. I think the message, I think the lyrics were even dope. Um, but just the singing itself, um, I'm sure you, I'm sure you're a good singer. I could tell that you're actually a good singer. But this uh, specific example wasn't, wasn't my favorite in terms of just the vocal display. Um, but to be honest, it didn't take away from the track too much. I was still able to vibe and rock with it. Um, so really dope i'm sure the video is very accompanying i've actually looked for talent's video i haven't seen him promote it too much on his social media um maybe he has been and i just missed it uh so i got i gotta check out the video that's something i've been waiting for thanks yeah i, I agree with pretty much everything anthony said i think that the message is awesome you can't really there's nothing you can say about that i mean the lyrics are great um I think the rap was actually really good. That's uh, the verses were awesome. Uh, I think Talon did a great job, um, and I thought the concept of the melody of the chorus was good. Um, yeah. I just it just was more of the the execution wasn't yeah. all there. I think, or and and I don't even know 
It's like maybe with with a different type of mix, maybe it could have been different. I don't know. Um, like, layer your vocals. Get a get a female to do some accompanying. Get talent yeah. to do some ad libs over it. Yeah. I if it was just a little dry, but it's just like like it just it didn't seem like it did him justice. Yeah. So can do as a singer. You feel me? Right. Um, I agree. Not, like it, I'm not sure if they're friends or if they just made this track randomly. If you sought this guy out, um, but I'm sure on a different, a different mix, different song, it'd be it'd be completely different. But yeah. get a couple more takes. Yeah. And um, before we move on to the next track, I do. I'm glad you you mentioned it because it, it certainly hasn't just been talent. There have been quite a few strong uh, black women as well doing their part. And I want to mention two of them that I know for sure um, because they were speaking today when they did a flag raising for Juneteenth. Um, Yvonne Valero, Valerio, and Chanel Boyce, two two very strong voices who have been a part of this. Absolutely have to shout them out as well. Cannot pretend that it's just one voice that's doing this. And and absolutely, it's it's so great to see. And you know, it, it was it was a situation I saw on social media this morning that they they might have had an issue with raising the flag um, because the the city was trying to avoid any type of whatever. Right. Yeah. Whatever whatever bullshit and they tried to raise it before the ceremony was actually supposed to happen so luckily thanks to Yvonne and 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 all the others they were able to make sure that this this went down the right way so you you just got to send support and appreciate people that are constantly doing the work um yeah if uh i i hope that we got the names correct or or if somebody could spell them if you guys know um any of those two women tag them in the comments uh, give them their thanks because they definitely deserve the praise for the day. Yeah, absolutely. The roses right. for that and, and all the other work that they've done. Uh, Ant, go ahead. You've got, you got the next track for us. Let's ha- go ahead and introduce it. Uh, so the next track, wh- which one's first? Is it? Uh, Awful P. All right. So this track is by a, uh, a rapper in Binghamton. If you're younger, you might not know him. Uh, but if you're, if you're really into the scene, uh, especially towards Binghamton area, you probably have to. He's an OG, um, really, really talented artist. Um, it, he would be, he's one of my favorite, and not to put a race on it, but he's easily one of my favorite white rappers in upstate New York. Um, he has a type of sound that it, it, it's really hard. It's really hard hitting, raw, gritty, nostalgic. Um, I forget the name of this track. The Plan. Um, the, what'd you say? The Plan. The Plan. The Plan, boom. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of hard hitting punchlines in this. Um, and I was gonna go song for song with homie last week. We're gonna reschedule it for some time soon. Um, this was one of the songs that I really fucked with doing my research. It's an artist we never spoke about on here. Um, and I'm trying to get some new faces up here. So yeah, hope you let's, got let's get it. Awful P the plan. <laughs> yeah, he's high on weed right now. <laughs> I'm about to fuck. If you ain't about it, don't holler, jump. I'm grabbing hoes by they push something like Donald Trump. I don't mean a hoe in the sense of having a pussy. But these pussies having no goddamn balls. I think they should be embarrassed to say they men. These boys kill us with their pen. Five seconds, I tell it's trash. I ain't sharing it. Shake my head. That's a strong thumbs down. Matter of fact, make it two of those. Who is it? You can't say suspect as usual. <laughs> Unusual, sick and a fucking rude of you bitches, but still they dig it. It's awful and fucking beautiful. Cost dope for the dick if it costs dope for the strip hall. I ain't giving nothing but fuck you ain't getting shit how. Stick out, fist full of blow that you can slip out. And if I so happen to do it with a nigga rig out. Couple load habits that I ain't fitting to let go. You slinging in the hood all day, no snaps on pet y'all. If I let go. Them things gon' echo Knock your ass back to the future like something retro I'm something special, bet you Nothing will happen when I tell you suck my dick No homosexual Crack rapper that rap crack in a glad bag He really ran the streets, y'all sweeter than PK and Sandy Holding on to a beer, I keep a can handy Clapping in the crowd like I'm there watching the damn Grammys Are the rappers either love me to death or they just can't stand me Especially the ones in skinny jeans wearing man panties Van Dammy when street fighting, I keep lighting mics like a reefer pipe. Now I got your seat fighting, keep fighting. Beast to the team since we was team titans, keep fighting. I get elated cause all they queens like it. 
That's the gist of it, isn't it? Cause you isn't it. Admit the shit, you jealous of me. At least a little bit. I know it sucks, you gotta wear that shoe. But show you fit in it. Could've walk a mile in my chucks. Go get some different kicks. We in this bitch like a penis that blast semen. Created damn fetus, Damien rap demon. Zany and half genius would faint if your ass screamers. Crave for the track, laying the crack that you ass peening. Closure from last season, still holes in my lap. Screaming, still toes in my feet, growing from the street roads in the damn semen. Blocking it, was rocking it, pocket full of accomplishment. Jugging out, no stopping it, dominant, I demolish and polish them all. Yellow season's cotton. And he's off. Wrong direction, fucking with me. You have gotta be lost. See you gonna bust your ass like a new cop on the force. No saint, fall from Jesus. Wrong gotta be cross. Take a chance, fucking with me. That's a lot of loss. Smash your glass ass fast. I got pottery jaws. You don't smell it, no spelling. I don't follow the laws. Choke on my dick. Don't forget to find the balls, you motherfuckers. That was the plan by Awful P. That that was dope, and I'm I'm like, this is where it's nice that you guys will be bringing on tracks too, because I'm surprised that I haven't heard of him or like really been able to check out what he's got. And that 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 probably is a lot, a little bit more my fault. I I struggle with looking or reaching out to some of the older artists for whatever reason, but uh, it might just be the disconnect with social media. Honestly, I don't I don't know if I see them on there as much, but. There, there, there are so many older artists who are really, really dope, especially in Binghamton, but probably in other areas as well. So I'm, I'm shocked. That was dope. What do oh, you think, Sheridan? Oh, yeah, Sheridan. I thought it was really dope, too. Um, I think the delivery is great. He has an awesome voice. Uh, some of the lines throw me off a little bit, but uh, overall, I can fuck with it. Um, I don't think anything was too abrasive. Just a couple <laughs> of them were like, all right, all right, bro. Um but the the rest of it I thought was dope. The rest of it I thought was dope. I thought the video was awesome. Um, and in general, it's easily one of the better songs uh, that I've heard out of Upstate. Yeah, exactly. Like he, from from a rapping standpoint, from yeah, how, he how did much, his thing. From how much confidence he has in his voice, um, he yeah. also has like a natural gritty voice that you just can't teach. Like the type right. of delivery he has is straight out of fifteen years ago. Um, and it, it doesn't sound out of place in 2020. Um, so that's something I think you, I, I got a good credit for. Um, and I love I, the guitar riff, too. The beat was fucking crazy. Um, I haven't heard somebody mention dick balls and pussy this many times. <laughs> and and I, maybe ever. Um, so that that's one thing that just, it was, a, it was probably the most repetitive theme throughout the song, which is weird. That's probably. <laughs> Probably my biggest criticism. That's an older generation thing too, man. I feel like, like, like there, yeah. like, I feel like there was just a, a difference in the thought process and in talking about fucking on tracks and just like an extra way, or maybe not even fucking, but just like that's my, that's terms related. Just fucking. He talked about having sex. He talked about. He, he just talked yeah. about. <laughs> he, he mentioned like, it wasn't just fucking. He was having sex too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, nah, but that, that was the one thing I think that might have been something that Sheridan was saying that or at least I felt the same way and those were the standout lines specifically to me yeah. um, like the first couple of times it's all good but even when like Lil Wayne mentions a corny ass sex bar or talks about his dick in a funny witty way I don't really want to hear it he's the first one I think of when people take it to the next level I'm like that's that Wayne shit yeah it's definitely it's definitely it's definitely Wayne but he, he didn't really remind me of when he reminded no, me of well, like yeah i'm not saying that that's what you said i'm just i i, I brought up the comparison of way um so he reminded me of like golden era hip-hop you know what i mean golden era hip-hop like he really has a nostalgic sound and you would be hard you, you would be hard pressed to find 10 rappers out here that can that can put a verse that competes with some of the shit that he was like you feel me like like from yeah. just some of his multis, some of the words he was saying that that pecan candy can't stand me. Fucking some of that, right? He turned up right there, bro. I'm not gonna fuck. Yeah. Um, so after going, he's somebody I've known about for a while. There's a bunch of, and not to bring race into it, but there's like three OG white rappers and Ben, Tone Chop, uh, Awful P, and K Swizzle, I think is the third one. And they're nice, bro. Like, and there's probably more to be honest, but those niggas are nice and they have careers. They they've done things. Tone Chop 
was on the top <laughs> the top uh, hundred album charts next to the Eminem show. Like his album was sitting right next to the Eminem show when it dropped. He's like forty years old. Um, yeah. that, that's that's the OG. I don't I don't know his age, so my bad. <laughs> if you're not free. um, but these are OGs, bro. Like these are niggas. I have tried to like dig into their discography and figure out the trajectory that they went on on their path. Um, Awful P is somebody that admittedly has said that he probably fucked up a couple opportunities or didn't take music as serious as he should have in his past. But it's good to see somebody at his age coming back stronger than ever, you feel me? Because he's truly in his bag. He, he, ne- he should never stop because he's one of those type of talents. Um, he, he He's really dope. I'm glad we got a chance to finally talk about him on the show. Yeah, and we'll, uh, I'll be keeping an eye out whenever he drops something else. We'll be talking about him again, I'm sure. Um, Sheridan, you're up. What do we What do we got from Dre V from you? Uh, so we, we got Checkmate by Dre V. This one's like two or three years old, but it's one of my favorites still that he's put out. He produced and engineered it himself. Um, and I just, I, I think in terms of like the bars and the beat, uh, it's it's definitely one of his best. Substance wise, maybe it's not his craziest. He, he some of his more recent songs have really like hit me substance wise and and like how personal they've been. Stay woke. Stay yeah, woke. yeah, facts. Yep. But then this one. When I made that song, looking for the New York, uh, or for the first for the New York shit, was this the track that you told me to listen to? This I think this was one of them, maybe. I think I sent you like two or three. Check checkmate sounds super familiar. I think I've heard this. Yeah, one. I probably did send you this one. This one is like definitely one of my favorites by him, so probably. Let's get it. Yeah, let's get it. Everything these niggas not Heard your homie call the cops Get it pack at 7 I'm calling him back by 12 o'clock Ain't nobody hot as me Kill them all with the modesty Everybody talking plugs I'm the nigga you gotta be Everybody feeling they self Nigga I'm back now Young God running the city So sit your ass down Dog saw set me up One of verses a stack now Shout out to my Rick And he always holding his trap down Back to what I'm rapping about Tied to you niggas acting I really live what I'm rapping about Flipping work now I'm cashing out Dre V the CEO Haters wanna see me go But I think we're forward Cause y'all the reason I'm keeping on okay. Old homies want me to fold I don't jack that jack New that. niggas want to get money Where the cash Where's at that? Thought that nigga wanted to zone me But where was I at yeah. Location unidentified Posted with all the cash yeah. at For the family only vibe Money would never change my Ooh. mind Not too many homies These fruity niggas be playing side Generation gates fuck yeah. Thought that they was high as hell Ooh. Bully niggas sleeping with pussy niggas And never tell Dallas too original Crazy like loose criminals Ooh. Caution when you listen These lyrics to probably sentence you finish. Praise to the ministry finish. Devil won't finish, finish me Rather sell this out with it Sell my soul to the industry check me make a move a nigga check me i got you calling a nigga check me hottest nigga out of upstate what do you say now listen to me oh. Can never lose, gaining power like a fuse. Stacking with the family, yo, you starving, nigga, choose. Broke niggas talking, I need them to give me room. Woo! Only wanna talk, who at the lowest price in the room? Where's Cause that? it's nasty to me, but the Nothing. dope. Used to trap an ounce of Joe. Now I got that grade A, all my licks on honor roll. Ay. Funny how we never lose, why you niggas is hitting snooze. Rapping, trapping, and acting 211 is coming soon. I be up to early moon, questioning niggas' major moves. Gerbers through the city, cause all you niggas is baby food. Hey, baby. hey we got the bitches too, bet she won't pillow talk with yeah. you. Fucking with a heavy, but on a low, she ain't jacking you. Don't be mad at me when we send her home with an attitude yeah. careful what you tell her you slip and we coming after coming. you gave it up for the pussy we'll take it and sell it back to you with my young niggas that's really focused on capital only like bitches that rob a man when i say so lay up in his crib while keeping an eye on his pesos real young boss i'm getting cash when i say so collecting on my profit and marketing him off my payroll pussy tired of you lying like we don't know nigga you a joke, it's really time to expose uh, niggas. You ain't really stacking and packing, they selling coke, nah. nigga. Put your ear up on your profit, I double that. I double. Me and Lito running up numbers, we see it back, nigga. Woo. Pop another hydro, cause he don't know how to act. Wait, Before I was a senior, I graduated and packed. What? The reason I'm the king, I talk it and make it snap, hey. nigga. Checkmate. Whoa. Make a move, a nigga, checkmate. Whoa. I got you calling, a nigga, checkmate. Whoa. Hottest nigga out of upstate. What do you say? Now listen to me, I'm tired of niggas talking about chicken but chasing pussy If chess is a game of levels, you niggas will be on rookie Miami for the win, I want it, I bet I'll cop it My hustle above average, I flip a trip to the tropics All you niggas talking, you get it, you need to stop it Before you try to hustle, you need to study your logic The hood don't really love you and chill with smoking your profit And when you getting cocky, remember who really got it, nigga Checkmate, make a move, a nigga checkmate I got your corner, nigga checkmate 
Hottest nigga out of upstate. What'd he say? Now listen to me. Hey! And that was Checkmate by Dre V. The the thing that stood out to me about that one, like you told us before when you sent it that he had produced it. And so the second I heard that, I was like, oh, all right. Like it, it all just, it was like, this is going to be dope. And by the time the, the track was finished, obviously. So, yeah. and what'd you think? And he, he's good. He's good at producing too. That, that sounded like some of the Swiss beats, Cassidy, Cassidy type tracks. If you guys ever heard those back in the day, um, so it, it, I can't really, that he's fast. Um, I've heard this before. I have a little appreciation for it now, listening to it back. Um, and I hope he doesn't take offense to this. And I don't think, I don't expect you guys to understand this, but he sounded almost like not what he was saying, but combined with the beat and the flow, he sounded almost exactly like Hobson. Like, I, I don't, I like, I, nah, bro. Like, I, I, I will play this back for you and show you where <laughs> you have some songs. I don't want to, it's not to take away from what he's saying. It's to like, Hobson has one of the most aggressive and just straightforward flows that I that I feel when I listen to him. And for yeah. to remind me of that is a good thing. Um, I, I want Dre to know if he ever sees this. Like this was, this was one of my favorite things I've ever heard from you, if not my favorite. Um, I've heard a lot of your SoundCloud shit. I've heard everything on your Spotify to date. Um, stay woke is up there, but I even like this more than stay woke. Stay woke is more mature, but just the just the rap fan in me, like this this show is hard. Um, but just the aggression and the the flow on all the verses, like it it, it was like prime pops, um, which, which is fucking crazy to see <laughs> because it was so New York. Um, so it was kind of it was it was polarizing at the same time because yeah. the West Coast. Um, that's so weird. I, I've never heard. I've never heard a Hobson before. I always hear not in this song particularly, not really at all. But in a lot of his songs, I hear Fab. Um, I, I I I see Fab. Stay woke. I see a lot of Fab in it. Yeah. Um, I I I think I brought this up when I first heard it. I, I'm not the biggest fan of modern Fab. Um, I think he has some of the most watered down and simple punch lines. Um, in the in, in modern hip hop, at least I know he's a legend and has said some crazy shit back in the day. Um, but if if Drake could stay like stay woke for a whole album, I would prefer that over a fab album. So Me yeah. too, definitely. Me yeah, too, definitely. It, it, it's crazy to see like like you said, this song is a little bit older. Like so, you've seen we've seen the growth, but you also see the potential he's had and like it, it is one of probably he's I haven't heard a ton bro. of Dre V, so it's dope to hear that this was this was an older track like. People obviously get better over the years, so I, I wanna I wanna check out more of what he's put out because I have heard some of it, but not not all of what he's put out. So that was dope. I, I'm, I, I gotta, remember he was dropping songs like, like four or five years ago, and they I don't remember hearing ever hearing a song by Dre, maybe one or two that I didn't really like, but never heard one that was like bad. Like he's always been on his shit since he started dropping music. That that's one thing. Like when you you can always argue preference and taste and opinion and shit, but. Talent, skill, quality is undeniable to a certain extent. So right. that's something that I can always respect. You know? Facts. Um, I, I got a track that I just got back from one of the projects I was talking to, talking to you guys off, off off air. I got an open verse on it. I need. I think I need Dre on that. I, I, I was thinking going back and forth. Finally. I, I, I think I need Dre on that. So I'm, I'm going to send that to him after this, see if he talks to it. Looking forward to that, man. Fucking, that's, that's dope. Um... That was a dope Dre V track. Check out what he's got on Spotify, SoundCloud. He's really dope. And who knows, we'll probably be seeing a collab with him and Ant in the future. Uh, the next track I've got lined up, this one's for me. It's by an artist named Isaiah Jordan. I know he was out of Syracuse. I think he moved out to Arizona. But he's stayed pretty consistent in terms of at least trying to work with other artists. Um, this is his most recent track. I've been pushing for him to drop consistently for a while. Um, and and he, he's, he struggles with it, I feel like. I feel like he's, he's an artist. He had a, he had a track that really kind of um, blew up a little bit early on and then wants to replicate that success and is struggling to. But this is a dope track. It's Lit by Isaiah Jordan. The sound original. Original, original. I know this shit different. I know this shit different. I know this shit different. Bitch, I'm lit. I'll put the Lex on too. I don't give a fuck how you feel. The last single did a million something, but I swear they ain't seen nothing still. 
They think my circle say ten. Hey, holy feel, holy feel. I mean, I am the goat, but now it's MLB Jordan out in the field. The sound original. I know this shit different. The lyrics mean something, but fuck it, it's hitting though. I'm doing my numbers, they see this shit coming, but they want the witness though. Red on my plate like a dinner roll. Jewelry look like it came right out the freezer, but niggas just worry about Piccolo. Hey, dash till it lose traction. Pray to God we don't crash it. Hey, effing on me in the whip, and I put effing on my bad bitch. Hey, put all that cap in. Niggas is frontin' and niggas is backwards. I got your bitch in my bed and it's satin. Hey, she wanna get the full package. Bitch, I'm lit, lit. I got big drip. Ain't depressed, but shit, my wrist lit. Talking big shit. Hey, bitch, I'm lit, lit. I got big drip. Ain't depressed, but shit, my wrist lit. Talking big shit. Hey, big shit. The sound original. I know this shit different. The lyrics mean something, but fuck it, it's hitting though. Hey, bitch, I'm lit, lit. I got big drip. Ain't depressed, but shit, my wrist lit. Talking big shit. Hey, I see the snakes in the grass. That's a snippet of lit by Isaiah Jordan. I'm actually um, cutting it a little short on time. So I'm unable to play the whole track. Um, but I'm curious to see what you guys thought about that. Uh, what do you think? I just went to Spotify to look up Isaiah Jordan um, while this track is playing, especially after you uh, put the intro up and he's talked about the million streams. So I try to do a little bit of research. Um, I just went through his Spotify, his Instagram, his Twitter. Um, the song particularly, clearly he's a talented artist. Um, he has professional flow cadence uh some dope lyrics in there um it wasn't a song for me i'm not gonna lie um i got clearly he's a talented artist i don't want to take away from him um but something about him screaming how original he is didn't sound original it actually sounded very generic yeah Um, that was the one thought that i kind of had while i was listening to it i was waiting for you to say something like that because while you're saying you sound original, it, it, like there are quite a few artists you could attribute that sound to, but it sounded a lot like a Drake track to me. Um, yeah. And you, so, if you go to his Spotify bio. First thing it says is often gets comparisons to Drake um, and and structures after Lil Wayne, um, blah blah blah. So I just I just read that, and that's one thing that I was listening to. Um, but it's you can't just necessarily replicate Drake. Um, and if he was trying to, which I don't think he was, he did. He did a poor job. Um, this this was more a little. He didn't have the melody for for necessarily a Drake, um, and he didn't have like the subtle lyricism um, that you would, you would expect. This excuse me. Um, the song itself just wasn't really. It wasn't it for me. I'm gonna check him out uh, because I believe in homie. I think that he's a very dope artist. I saw so much hints of where his ceiling could be. Um, this song, I can when you. It seems like you summed it up perfectly when you said he got that million views and he's been trying to trying to reach it ever since. This sounds like he didn't make this from the heart. He made a song that he thought people would like, um, which which is something that I struggled with for a while. And I'm getting out of that bag, um, and it's a great feeling. I'm sure if he made something more from the heart or a little bit more genuine, it, it would slap a little bit different. I could still see this having success, getting some plays. Um, people getting hyped to it. For me personally, I probably won't listen to this song again. Yeah, I wasn't really a fan at all. Like, I I didn't think it was like bad. I just it wasn't really something I would listen to. Um, I thought I kind of agreed with everything you guys said. I don't really not. I don't have much, too much to add other than the fact that I th- I actually thought his flow was pretty lazy and his delivery was pretty lazy. Um, <laughs> the the first real cypher roast we have gotten man that i mean and I'm, i I can't disagree too much with you guys i honestly I, I play this track because he has had better tracks in the past i want to correct and i don't know oh, I've if heard i said way him. worse tracks i don't know by him like, by him. people have submitted way worse tracks i just didn't get to like you no not by oh yeah him, you didn't like, get like, to like truly. i just don't i don't want it to think it's like the, it's not the worst track i've ever heard on this yeah. on this podcast for sure it's just like i just did not like it at all <laughs> Um, but the reason I wanted to play it is because it is his most recent track. He's someone that will, like, I, w- I honestly won't be surprised if he pulls this off streaming services in a month or two because that's what he's cons- been more consistent with doing. He dropped a project, like, six months ago, a year ago that I thought was a really dope EP. He put it on SoundCloud. I was really messing with it, and next thing you know, 
he pulled it off and just like, I don't know if he wasn't confident with it or what the issue was, but, and then it just, so it's been a cycle of this. I want to make sure I'm, I correct either myself or Ant. I don't know if I said he had a million streams. I just know he had a track that popped oh, off. Um, he had a million streams in the song. Oh. I if I, if I, if I heard that correctly, I don't think I made that up. Um, I think he I'd did. have to see the receipts on that, but I, it, oh, no. No, so I, I, I believe you said that. I would have to see his receipts on actually the the million streams. I I because he he does have he's had tracks that have popped off, but I haven't seen him pop off to that to that exactly. level. So. I don't think that you. I was quoting you. I think I was quoting the song. Yeah. Um, when you talk about taking stuff off due to confidence issues, I don't want to keep citing his Spotify bio, but it says that he took off years from dropping music because of self confidence issues and believing that he couldn't actually thrive in the music industry and that sucks because he is dope dude like i'm i'm like he the the ep he put out i really i really liked it and he's done other stuff that i really liked so it's like it's it sucks when you have to watch an artist struggle with those confidence issues where if you just got over that and put out tracks that that like you got it you got to build up a history man you can't just be like well i'm gonna delete every album that doesn't hit so and I, i i could elaborate on this and i'm gonna try to say this as briefly as possible I've talked to many artists, um, a lot of people come to me about confidence issues um, because some people seem to think that I don't have them because I'm constantly pushing through and promoting and dropping the blah, blah. No, like confidence issues are a real thing for every single artist. But at the end of the day, if you value yourself off what other people think of your music and your art, then you're never going to be satisfied. Yeah. I tell artists every time they come to me that you have to be self-driven and self-motivated and make music that you hold near and dear to you, but that you're honest with in terms of the masses. Because yeah. just because something's near and dear to you doesn't make it good. But you can make good music that comes from the heart or that's passionate um, and that you're actually drawn to, like you have, that you have refined and perfected. Um, if, you don't, if you don't hold your own self-worth in this, you won't last very long. Yeah. Um, if, if you determine how successful you are or, or how your life is going based off who's listening right at this very moment um, and how many streams or likes you're getting on your posts, then you're not going to last very long in this game because that's, that's, that's a tough card to play. Yeah, and even if, even if it's like you're trying to be a perfectionist, at some point you have to let go and just put your – you've got to let it be out there. You can't, you can't be like, well, it didn't hit the way I thought it would, so now I'm going to pull it because it's not perfect. So there is a point at being a perfectionist. you just got to let it go and be out there. And learn from whatever responses you get and try to fix it, not take the critique to heart. And I hope dude doesn't take what we've said as like a super disc, because like I said, I really fuck with some of his music. And I like, don't. Well, don't. I, I think that he yeah. a little bit. I think, I, I think he might feel a little bit disrespected by what we said, but I hope he doesn't. Yeah. Um, because. No, no, yeah, no, let me just clarify again, like, because I didn't really, um, I didn't think he sounded like a bad artist. Like, I think he definitely sounded like he was a talented artist. Again, I just want to say it was that song that didn't hit yeah. me. You got, we just got to be honest on this show. People not going to take us yeah. serious. We don't say our opinions. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. And so let's go ahead and jump to the next track. And you've got this one by a very popular artist for, for at least the podcast, but Upstate as well. Yeah, I mean, this is this is one of the more promising artists. Um, I, I just hope that he can. I'm, I'm waiting for Meech's next move. Um, in case you, I guess I just spoiled it. It's Meech book, in case you didn't know, which is a near and dear friend, but somebody that I also hold um, into one of the into one of my favorite artists in Upstate. Uh, point point. Um, this song in specific, I um, I brought up to the podcast because I think it shows a side of Meech that we don't see too often. I'm not sure if you guys are both familiar with this, but this is in a easily, including Blur, this is in my top five Meech tracks, and it's probably close to the three or two, um, just because it's, it's so honest. This reminds me of the roots of Meech, um, and I know him as a person, so I know just how, how honest he was being in some of these moments and vulnerable. I think that if he explored this sound a little bit more, um, we could get an insane, an insane album Bet. Let's get it. Tables turned by Meech Booker. I wanna kill myself. Sometimes I don't feel myself. Hey, sometimes I wanna kill myself. Hey. 
Sometimes I wanna kill myself. Sometimes I don't feel myself. Sometimes I just wanna be. I just wanna sleep in a bed. Sometimes I want your bitch to give me the head, give me the neck. Fifth grade, you ain't no bitch, I been a soldier. Watch a nigga be my mama ass, I wanna hold her. Look at your reaction, wish I never would've told ya. But fuck that nigga, I'm trooping, I been a soldier. It was me and Junior Coop in that bedroom, mama, I love you. Cause I know you try your hardest. We was cooped in that apartment at Christmas, had no present. She like, boy, don't get me started when them taxes come. We gon' get it right. Tryna figure when I walk up in that building, everybody looking at me. To my daddy, since and ever since, I swear I ain't been happy. Call me white, but they don't look and see my head still fucking nappy. You ain't never do no wrong, so why these niggas always at me? I been running, 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 gotta run it up. Got another chance, I pray to God and I don't fuck it up Cause if I do, who will send my side, tell me they there for me Come and take the pain away, don't bring it back another day And lately I've been sitting thinking, what if I don't make it When I guess all of them people said I should've went to college They don't understand that you don't need a school to get the knowledge Try to tell you that you stupid, really, they the fucking problem Had my nigga pop at your crib like, hey, what's up, fool? Remember you used to fuck up on your bitch way back in high school You a pussy nigga, so no wonder we don't like you Swimming all of your bitches, she like me, she, I can't find you but shit ain't been really feeling the same I forgot to tell you that I've been meaning to change But you don't understand what be happening in my brain No matter who you are, everybody gon' feel some pain So really you ain't special, my nigga, is you insane Last night I had a dream that I caught and it blew my brain Blood on that floor, I know that boy done blew his brain now Pain all in my eyes, don't ever think I'll be the same now. Hey, yeah Sometimes I wanna kill myself Sometimes I don't feel myself Sometimes I just wanna be Sometimes I just wanna sleep in a bed Sometimes I want your bitch to give me the head Give me the neck Fifth grade, you ain't no bitch, I been a soldier Watch a nigga be my mama ass, I wanna hold her Look at your reaction, wish I never would've told ya But fuck that nigga, I'm trooping, I been a soldier Nets Tables Turn by Meech Booker. This track is one I've, I've probably listened to this 50 to 100 times because this was the track that made me like a Meech fan straight up like from nope. because I, I was I listening to him before and then he dropped this and, and since then he's dropped tracks that I that I've also listened to quite a bit. But this one I've listened to this track so many times and it's one I think I can I can relate to it pretty well. Um, some of the shit that he's saying and, and it's just a, a really good track like Meech is dope so. I mean, like, like like you said, I've listened to this 50 to 100 times. I, I got goosebumps right now. And it's not, like, it's a real song. And it's not as real, like, I, I don't know exactly why I have goosebumps right now. Because it's not, like, some tear-jerking, like, super emotional song. But the way that he goes back from, like, just, just whimsical comedy to some of the realest shit he said in his whole career. Like, it, it, it like, really is captivating. His flow was was consistent through the whole track i wish that he bought the fucking beat so there was like he said there wasn't the tags throughout it but like oh man like just the bridge and the hook it's itself every the build up the progression how he changes his tone in the second hook when he comes back like it everything about this track it might even be my number one meets track i know it's my most listened to meets track by far um like I really, I really hope that Meech goes into a more personal lane. And I've known him and I've been good friends with him since 12 years old. So like everything he said in this fucking song is, is so unbelievably true. And to see him be a little bit more vulnerable um, than he typically is, because he gets honest sometimes. But even when he's honest, if I had to critique it a little bit, it's, it's sometimes it's generic. Even his honesty can get generic. He can like elaborate it deeper you feel me um and sometimes he has lines that um negate from his message in a song i think he stayed on topic very well through this whole track he painted he told a story he painted a picture he made you nod your head he made you happy he made you sad like this is something that i think shows uh Nietzsche's skill right now um as a rapper at least and a hip-hop artist in full display yeah, I think I agree. This is one of my favorite Meech tracks as well. I probably listened to it like like ten times, um, and I would say my my biggest critique would be like as personal as it is. 
I don't necessarily love when he goes to the like little whimsical comments. Like, like well, I, it well, kind of it takes away from what he's doing. You feel me? Yeah, I feel like he just like if he wants to do that, he should do a song like that. And then like for that for this song, like I wish he just stayed personal the whole time. But I do like like you say, I hope he continues to explore this lane because once he does, that will come. Like if, if he only does the personal stuff sometimes. You got to do it like a lot and really dive deep to be able to stay on that topic for a whole song. I, I, I completely agree. Um, I, I, I would say I agree. And, and one thing that I, I would like to expand on off that, though, is that I think Meech has been building some sort of not necessarily persona because it's him. If you knew him, you know, like like all the party shit, all the female shit, yeah. all the real shit, all the, all the personality, awkward traits he talks about in his new, that's Meech. Like, he really does yeah. talk about himself. Um, but sometimes it, it, like, he's building a brand going back and forth from that, that whimsical shit to the serious shit. And I agree, it would be cool to see him separate it sometimes, but I think that throughout the 20 songs that he has released, that it's a consistent theme and something that I, I I don't see him dropping per se. I think that's part of Meech Booker. Um, and it's one of actually the reasons why I really like him in this song specifically. I would love to see just, I, I would love to hear this song without that one line in the chorus though. Like just to hear yeah. how, but anytime he's like, I want your bitch to give me the head, give me the neck. Like, I, I just start cracking up and then he goes right back to real shit. And I'm like, oh wow change of pace so I, I might not even like this song the same if he didn't if he didn't have that there little comedic release you feel me so who knows but we'll see in the future because he's still a young artist he's younger than yeah. us um and he's got all three of us and he's gonna have he's had he has How a lot old is he? He, he he's i don't think he's 21 yet i think he's about to be 21 oh, damn that's crazy yeah yeah, he's just yeah, one I wanna, I wanna get a full song, length. I, I wanna hear more from him. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Like I want I want a full length from him. Well, or at least a, at least like a at least like a like a five or six song EP. At least just like solo. The Lucy's no are so, at this point the Lucy's are just tease. It's just a tease, man. You get done with it and you you that's why you play it fucking a hundred times because you want more and you're like, well, I got this and this is great. So, I mean, if you don't, it's yeah, a good yeah. problem to have. Maybe you do think this. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but like he has five or six song EPs in the vault that he could put out. I'm sure he has collections of music that he could put out. But one thing that Meech doesn't get the credit for is how strategic and unique of a thinker he actually is. Um, and I think that the run that Meech went on between singles and music videos um, and anonymity is is one of the most underrated runs. That, that I've seen through this area because for a while he was quietly dropping single after single and quality unique video after video um, for at least six months to a whole year. And he's been a little bit quiet since blurs happened, um, but I expect him to make a big comeback any day. And we still have a track that should be coming out soon. Um, it's finished. I heard the mixed version. Uh, I can't wait for that to drop. But I'm trying to I'm trying to see a, a Meech solo project as well. That, looking forward to that. Something else we've been looking forward to is some new music from Sheridan. Sheridan, what do, what do you got lined up for us? What's the second track you got? What are we What are we playing here? So this is a track that I just got a kind. I think it's a finished mix. We're not positive, but uh, it's called "The Door Is Open," and I don't really know when I'm gonna release it. I don't know when I'm gonna release any music. Um, I'm kind of still considering my options just seeing what what will be best um but this is one that i definitely one of my favorites i wouldn't say it's my favorite but one of my favorites that i've worked on recently what what genre would you put it in um i don't know it's so it, like i've been doing like it's definitely poppy it's poppy but like it's ch like chill it, it's like lo-fi without it actually being lo-fi you know what i mean like it's that it's a, it's a lo-fi vibe, but it's not lo-fi. Yeah, let's get yeah. it. Uh, you, what do you want me to play? Thirty seconds, a minute, Sheridan. Uh, a minute's cool. Yeah. Bet. Big up Cosmo. You should face it. No replacement for me. No. Put my 
shoes on with our lace and I gotta go I'm um, focused on myself so why they always pocket watching I'll never be the type who's copping chains and popping watches Rattle in my brain but still my problems ain't the call yeah I'm losing all my patience still I gotta trust the process I'm learning pretty quickly coming in just like a comment Gotta keep my focus off the likes and all the comments Rattle in my brain but still my problems ain't the call yeah I'm losing all my patience still I gotta trust the process Y'all should fix it, no replacement for me now I'ma travel different places, put on shows It's so close that I can taste it, I'm on a roll Put my shoes on without lace it, gotta go That's a snippet of Sheridan's um, upcoming track. That might be one of my favorite Sheridan tracks. I'm glad I've got it so I don't just have to hear the snippet. <laughs> no question. That is my number one favorite Sheridan track to this day that I've ever heard in my life. Um, I'm not going to say it's your best track, but that to me, that, that was... That was that was real. That was really impressive, bro. Like, thank you, bro. It was a, it was a change of? It reminded me of like a. Oh uh, man, I don't. I don't want to gas your head up, so I'm gonna. Be, I'm, gonna I'm gonna use these names loosely. I. Right? It reminded me of like when Mac and Anderson Pac link up, or like some Tyler the Creator type shit. I think a lot of it had to do with the production, but the flow that you use throughout the whole thing, some of the vocal changes. The melodies that you yo that that was a fucking track and I'm a, I'm a, when I see you I'm gonna beat you up if you don't <laughs> let me for that I, it's, I that would be heat that. too fuck yeah dude and straight smoke if you don't let me on the remix for that I that show is crazy bro I got I'm, you I'm kidding no smoke <laughs> just just shoot a video for that because you would be doing yourself a disservice if you don't shoot one on the California beaches and. Yeah. and and get a nice oh my that that was dope bro that was yeah you, it, it was really dope and it kind of like obviously like i enjoy music by you sheridan but this one kind of caught me by surprise i was like this like this is really really good and I, I agree with most of the comparisons that ant makes like that max name or max name definitely went through my head listening to this so like it this was dope man and like i said i'm really glad i've got it so i don't gotta bug you about it because this this is a dope track um, yeah, I'll still be excited this is, this for is the, kind job, of the but It's kind of the vibe I've been on. I, th I think like before this track, like I was doing more like lo like more love type songs. This was not the topic wasn't totally like love. The other songs were really like uh I don't know, R and B like kind of lovey dovey type shit. But this this one is like kind of different. It's more like personal. It, it, this track was a change of pace from everything I see you drop. Um I'm glad that I don't, I'm not sure when you had this finished, but I'm glad it wasn't on your project. Um, uh, maybe it'll be on a future project, um, but I'm, I think that this will indicate. Even you showed so many different signs of how you can be in so many different genres that you can hit. This was even. I, it's weird to say that you got a new pocket, but this is like a, this is still another sound that you have on your tool belt. I don't, I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't really classify this as lo-fi, though. Um, so I don't know what to call I, it. I was. I, that's why. I, before we jumped in, I just wanted to tell you, like, well, let's not even throw a genre on it. Let the comments decide, or let it let us decide. Because I don't know what I yeah, would call it. But that was decide, fucking. I don't know what the fuck to call it either. No, that was. I mean, you better learn what to call it. <laughs> just have Spotify playlist. Oh, um, but that shit was that. That shit was next level, bro. So so you, bro. whatever you're doing. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you got in the future. Facts, and that that was another another one of those upstate exclusives on the cipher. We got back to back right. weeks. Look at look at what happens when I got dope uh, co-hosts. But um, that, like, 
That, that's dope. I'm looking forward to that track officially dropping, Sheridan, just because like, I, I like having tracks early, but it's way easier when they're they're easily accessible on Spotify and shit. But like Anthony said, I'm excited for it to, like, I'm glad it wasn't on your last project because yeah. it shows a different direction for you. And it shows yeah. you I have a, doing I have that a friend, really well. I have a close friend making cover art. Thank you. I have a close friend making cover art, um, and I think she's going to make it this weekend, and I'm really excited for what she's going to do because she made... Um, cover art so for some of my old music um i like young little child stuff that's like some of my favorite cover art i've ever had um and she's been getting better and better like every year so um i'm excited to see what she does dope. shout out to autumn stevens she's the one who's doing it for me oh man Dope. So not not Autumn Stevens from Cortland. <laughs> Autumn Stevens from Homer. <laughs> not, not that Autumn Stevens. It make not it clear. Autumn All right. Stevens. Yeah, let me just make it cool Autumn Stevens, not racist Autumn Stevens. Let me just clear it up. <laughs> that, um, so that wraps up that wraps up the six tracks we, we, we had to play this week. So if you guys want us to play tracks, you don't just got to reach out to me now. Reach out to Sheridan. Reach out to Ant. Let them know you got something you'd like to have played on the on the show, and we'll get to it in due time. We're, we're sort of cutting it down from eight or nine tracks to six, something a little bit more comfortable, but... We're absolutely open to suggestions. It doesn't have to be something that just dropped yesterday. If you got something for us, uh, send it our way. But this does pretty much wrap up this week's episode of The Cypher. Um, you guys want to go ahead and plug what you got going on, Anthony? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if you tuned in to the beginning of the podcast, you would have heard Purple Heart Freestyle that dropped today, produced by a frequent collaborator, Pierce Dearly, my man, the homeboy, always fire when we link up um, and uh, it, it, it's a new sound. I'm not going to say it's a brand new sound. Like It's not like I've ever done something like this. But for spring cleaning, um, the closest thing was Goof Troop. But even this was more upbeat and less uh, topic-based. This was more so just a freestyle, um, just random random bars. I hope people fuck with it. And if we can play that at the end instead of Kay Michelle or Henny and Coke, um, I, I'd like to rock that out one more time. Yeah. So just, just tune in to spring cleaning. I'm not going to stop. I got my finished project back tracks and cover art. Um, one of these days, I want to do an episode where I premiere it on the episode. Um, Another upstate actually... exclusive. Exactly for the for the whole project, um, or so we'll work that out. But I'm really excited to show you guys these some of these new sounds I've been working on. Um, I, I got I, I got a lot of shit in the vault, and it seems like Sheridan does too. So I'm gonna let this man plug what he got. Follow follow me on social medias and all that. Facts, facts. Um, yeah, I got a lot of shit that I've been working on. I'm, I've been trying to, like I said earlier in the show, I've been trying to do a song a day, trying to keep that a consistent thing. Now, um, I don't know when I'm going to be releasing music yet. I, again, I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to do it sooner or later. Um, I, I think I, if I compile music till maybe right before the end of the year or the beginning of 2021, I think that could be something that I could be dropping music like every week, every two weeks for the, for all of 2021, kind of like something that Anthony's doing. Um, so I'm just kind of weighing my options. Um, but other than that, follow me on social media, all that, uh, keep up with me. I'll keep up with y'all hit me up producers. I'm looking for beats. So hit me up. Um, other than that, Bet and that's what's up. Make sure you not, make sure you check out Upstate Aesthetic. We uh, posted a couple of news stories this week. A couple of things. Uh, Ant's got some stuff he's working on. MBK Richie's got an EP coming out. Uh, we got an interview with Corey with Corey Loveless. Make sure I say the right Corey because I always get the both of them mixed up. Uh, interview with Corey Loveless. Um, really dope interview. So check that out. Um, also, in eight months, I have a kid coming, so that's cool. But that doesn't really affect anything we've so got awesome. going on here. Um, that does wrap up everything we've got for this week's episode. Uh, let's go ahead and get some more Purple Heart going. Yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me Before? say this one story real quick. Because you just brought up Corey Loveless and you mistake, and you mistook him for a black man. <laughs> so I, I, have a, I have a relevant story. <laughs> like, I was in the studio one time with Corey. And we're, we're with some Syracuse artists that I don't know that Corey did. <laughs> and they're sitting there. And they look at me and they're like, yo, bro, Jewish, right? And I was like, I was like, nah, bro, I'm black. And he was like, he had a hard time believing it. Like I had to convince him that I was black. And then he was like, well, Corey's black, right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you got it. I, I, 
I almost like lost my shit, bro. I was like, yo, where am I? Like, is yo, this at a- least I'm not alone for confusing him for a black man, bro. Exactly. No, there's there was bro, there was a kid in my class at the school that I go to in San Francisco, Pier Mind, uh a, a black kid and he he like asked me if I was half black. I was like, What? I was like, No, bro, do you see me? Like, are you fucking kidding me? That is that that's just dumb funny, bro. Like that that when I was sitting there, I just couldn't believe it. He he like we had, he was still having trouble processing that I wasn't Jewish and that Corey wasn't black. Like that's I, crazy. <laughs> that's crazy to me. That's so crazy. if you guys got any stories in the comments of when you were mistaken for being half black, make sure you let us know. Um, <laughs> until next week, this has been the Cipher. Here's Purple Heart. It's just bars. Somebody. Niggas sound like Uncle Tom's, just a bunch of Bill O'Reilly's Bitch, I kept the trap jumping, meet them in the building lobby Going back and forth with a rat, oh you still a common Give it up, homie think he rap, but the niggas suck All it took for me was hard work and a bit of luck Lollygagging, I'm body bagging, bout to zip it up The like cup, cup ain't no crack goose, like like you was sitting up In the front of me when I'm out of session I'm the boss, so I take charge, charge. strap you and me and crap that weapon and bash Niggas said about to kick your car, pen like a Mac 11 I'm not doing a show, I need my money and half of your cash